But the Hornets suffered a setback in late January when their leading scorer, Gifton Noel Williams, cracked a bone in his thigh. He hasn't played since. Defender Tommy Mooney picked up his goal-scoring boots after nearly a year and 35 games without netting. He went on to score six goals in six consecutive games in the run-in. At the end of March, three places and seven points separated Watford from the playoff picture. But they put in a terrific finish, which saw them gain 22 points from the last available 24. Peter Kennedy's goal against Grimsby on the final day secured their place. They were the bookies' outsiders at the start of the playoffs, but they've beaten all of their rivals this season. And the two promoted sides to boot. They've been prolific on their travels too. They scored 35 goals away from Vicarage Road. That's three more than Birmingham has managed at home. Finalist Bolton were beaten at the Reebok. They're the team in form. It's 11 unbeaten now, and they haven't lost away for five. But they do have the worst defensive record of any of the teams in the top nine away from home. They've let in 37 in just 23 league matches. They were as high as second in November, but then their form dipped. In the middle of March, they were down in eighth spot before they hit that fantastic patch of form. To get here, they played 47 games and won 22 of them. Alan Bentley has been speaking to Graham Taylor. If you look back on the season, there have been one or two dips in form. Usually it has to be said when we're filming you. Yeah. You must be delighted the way the players have come back from those mini dips. Well, I mean, that is the whole basis of why we finished where, where we have done, because when we've had a little dip, as you say, in form, it hasn't uh, lasted all that long, although at one particular stage, just after Christmas, in February time, it looks as if it was going to cost us, but we've had this tremendous run as we came into the end of the season, and there we are, you know. I mean, the, the facts of the matter, really, is that only on one occasion this season, when the league tables have been formed, have uh, the players been out of the top eight. So I think, you know, in that sense, uh, they deserve to be where they are. Do you feel it was important to hit the ground running as far as the playoffs were concerned in the Birmingham game? Um, I think everybody would say that, uh, you know, if you finish the season in a, in a winning vein, then you go into a playoff situation uh, confident. But having said that, uh, you know, we're now at the second leg stage, uh, as people see it. Um, it's nice to have that 1-0 lead, but we've got to be looking to win the game. I mean, I'm sure Birmingham City, uh, you know, a big city club uh, will expect to get into the problem and they will expect to be able to recover that one goal deficit. Our job is to make sure that they don't. In some respects, do you rue the fact that you didn't make the most of your early dominance at Vicarage Road? Well, no, I mean, the point is that we can always look back and say that, you know, we should have won probably more than one, but I mean, Birmingham had a couple of chances in the second half when we hadn't taken that lead. If they'd scored theirs, perhaps we might even be on equal terms. All you can ask players to do is to win a game. You know, you can't say to them, I want you to win this 3-0, 4-0. You want them to win the game. And nobody ever misses chances on purpose or anything like that. So, you know, yeah, we had one or two opportunities in that early start, but they didn't go on. But we achieved what we set out to do, and that was to win that match. Now we're hoping to do the same again. Inevitably, people will bring back comparisons to the late 70s, the early 80s, when you had the success here first time around. Are the memories still fresh of those days? Not really. That's, you know, it's, it's 10 years more, actually, since I left uh, Watford in 87. And... Uh, 77 I joined them so when you say they're fresh they're there when I want to think about them but I've got I'm too busy at the moment with this present group of players and it's only right and proper that they should be able to uh, play their own part in, in, in achieving whatever they want to achieve for themselves also it has to be said that they know that in previously you know the club was in what is now the premiership and the FA Cup final and European all those kind of things so they have a chance really now to make their own mark and 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 be another set of players another group of players who created something special for Watford and I'm only interested in that I think memories are nice things I think they're part of nostalgia and I think it's nice to look back but usually you know you do that when you're out of work what about you personally you talk about the players but there's been 
few people who've suffered at the hands of the press like you have. Are you enjoying this sort of moment of glory again? Well, it's not really a moment of glory. I enjoy being working with professional footballers. And sometimes, you know, we can overplay the importance of the press. Um, I mean, I'm in, in no shape or form denying, of course, there was an influential part on my career. But that was when, uh, as the England manager, I was not being successful. I was not successful in qualifying for the World Cup. And so you're going to get criticism, you're going to get the press after you. Uh, that stands to, to reason. And they do go over the top on occasions. But I mean, when I look at my career as a manager, which started in 1972, I think I, without being boastful, have reason to be, you know, quietly pleased with it because there have been moments which have gone very well for me and a lot more moments in a managerial career that have gone well for me rather than not. Now I'm hoping that there can be, this can be another moment. It's not basking in the glory of it, it's just working as a football manager. The best thing about being a football manager all of the time is being out on a football pitch Monday to Friday working with players and then on the Saturday seeing them perform, seeing them win, seeing them improve as players. That's the best thing about being a football manager, it's got nothing to do with the press at all. And the press had a fine old time with Graham Taylor, it has to be sure. Uh, but the Watford fans have stuck by him and um, I don't suppose they'll hear a bad word against him. Not at all, he's done a wonderful job there in two spells. It's 11 years ago since they were in the Premiership come First Division and that's where they'll be wanting to go back to. Graham Taylor, Alton John and everybody connected with the club would be wanting to get there. And it'd be great for these players to live up to the likes of John Barnes, Luther Bursett, Kenny Jackett, Nigel O'Callaghan. All these players, they can make themselves household names now. Do you have fond memories, Dean, of uh, Vickers Road? Yeah, I do. I mean, when I grew up there, I was, um, I was an apprentice and I was in the youth team as well. And um, I had a great time there, a great spell. And I've got a lot to thank Graham Taylor for, actually. When I, uh, when I was 17, I, was, I had a bad knee operation and he actually gave me a two-year professional contract. He said, if you get yourself fit and prove me right, you know, you, you've got a good career. And he gave me a chance to come back, and other clubs might not have done that with an apprentice. Um, so I've got good, good memories of Watford, and um, I'm amazed to see how well they've done. They've actually built this stadium up very nicely as well, they've gone along the way. They've had a rough spell, and now they're, they're back where they, they think they belong. Um, and I'm amazed how they've done this season. A lot of teams have said, well, they might have been doing well just to sustain it, first division status, but they've gone for broke, and uh, the team's done amazingly well. Is it fair to say, Nigel, that there are horses for courses and that perhaps as a national manager, Graham would have been better sticking to club management? Yeah, but I think if you asked any club manager out there at the time, they would want to be the national manager. It's changed a little bit now because of the profile, because of the problems that Glenn's had and most probably Terry Venables has had along the way. Maybe a lot of the top managers don't want the national job now and there's obviously, until now, more money in being a club manager than a national manager, but Graham Taylor wanted to take on that. He took it on as best he could. It didn't work out for him, but he did a good job at Wolves for a short space of time where he got, got the sack. Obviously did well at Aston Villa as well, but his main feature of his career has been what he's done for Watford over the years. And he'd be wanting to get them back in the Premiership. The only problem for them if they actually get there is, is can they stay there? Because the facilities, the, the, the ground there, uh, most probably isn't up to the standard of, say, someone like Birmingham if they get there. But uh, the only time they've slipped up this season has been when Graham's had a sore throat and was in the hospital and, you know, was very, very ill, he actually. Is the talisman. So uh, most probably now he's back ranting and raving at them. He's getting the best out of them once again. Birmingham fans, just as good spirits at the moment. It's a great atmosphere, isn't it? I mean, will this have an effect on the players or will they be nervous anyway? I think this will be uh, fantastic for the players. They can hear it, we can hear it. Um, when they go out on that pitch before kick-off, It'll give the nerves a chance to settle down, and um, I'm sure we'll see a very um, fierce start to the game. And, but it'll get into the players, it really will, it'll be fantastic. These are the atmospheres you want to play in as a professional football anywhere. You want to play in front of a full house, you know, 30,000 could be here. Their average gate is 21,000, they show they're a big club. That's uh, Trevor Francis, I'm told, or is it just some bloke that looks like it? <laughs> That's the manager. That's the manager. <laughs> what, teams, what teams out there tonight? <laughs> Jasper Carrick. A big Birmingham fan, and there is a big Birmingham flag. That's been passed around the stadium for the last 20 minutes or so. As Dean said, how does the bloke who made it get it back? <laughs> That's Jasper's. <laughs> <laughs> or is it Trevor's, sorry. No, wonderful atmosphere. I think everybody's going to enjoy it tonight. The only shame is that one of these teams is going to go to Wembley, one isn't, and I think it's going to be extremely close. Is this like a, an FA Cup semi-final? Worse to lose here than it would be at Wembley? I don't know, I think you always want to get to Wembley. Um, the, prize Wembley. Wembley isn't it? the prize is yeah. Wembley, but the prize, first and foremost, is Premier League status. And um, 
this is one of the things, everyone wants to play at Wembley and uh, we also want to get to the Premier League, you know. If you get to the final of this, the playoffs, and you lose, I did that with Sheffield United a couple of years ago, it's worse than actually losing a cup final because I did that with Liverpool against Wimbledon. It's actually worse because the prize is getting up into the Premiership and playing against the Premiership sides week in, week out. And for a club like Sheffield United, that would be a great thing. For either of these two clubs, it's going to be great. But they actually want to get to Wembley, the players. But to lose there in this, the playoffs is heartbreaking. Well, it's time for us to go and uh, grab a piece of that flag. In the meantime, we'll hand you over to Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Here have been made aware of their importance to the proceedings tonight and uh, giving their full backing in the build up to this game. And really, the early goal that they conceded at Vicarage Road on Sunday wasn't ideal for Birmingham, but what they need to do here tonight is unchanged. And with the objective of a win in mind, Trevor Francis has selected a positive looking team. Paul Furlong, Dili Adebola, and Peter Undlove all start. Adebola is the club's leading scorer despite 15 absences from the starting 11 this season because of injury. Francis isn't convinced that he'll complete tonight's game, but at least with Lee Bradbury on the bench, he'll have another option. The other change from Sunday sees the return of Brian Hughes. He was a late withdrawal after an Achilles injury. Graham Hyde, who was also pulled out with food poisoning, hasn't recovered sufficiently to figure. Wow, it's electric atmosphere on a fantastic pitch here at St Andrews. And the Birmingham City fans doing their best to cheer on the Blues. Four at the back, Rowett, Holdsworth, Johnson and Granger, the back four. Then the front, McCarthy, right-hand side. O'Connor, hard-working central midfield player. And Brian Hughes, who went on that beautiful, amazing run in our last live game here against Ipswich Town. Unlove will just sit. Very important for Unlove to see the ball early on. Just sitting behind Furlong and Ad Adibola, but for me, the key players here for Birmingham is Rowett and McCarthy, Granger and Hughes, to stop the dangerous first-hand crosses from the Watford side. Watford are forced into changing their winning side. Paul Robinson's suspension for two bookable offences in, is enforced immediately, but Graham Taylor makes the minimum possible alteration to the side, bringing in veteran Nigel Gibbs a survivor of Watford's only other appearance in the playoffs ten years ago, and one of nine players who played in last year's second division winning team. The only exception is Michel Gunga, who scored the winning goal on Sunday, and number 11, Nick Wright. Well, pretty straightforward for Watford. 4-3-3, Alec Chamberlain goal. Beasley, Palmer, who's been superb this season for them. Page, tough centre-back, and Gibbs left-hand side. The three midfield players, the Aussie, Johnston, right-hand side, Micah Hyde, central midfield player, and Kennedy, left-hand side. I think Kennedy and Gibbs will be tremendous down the left-hand side. Watch for them pinging the ball into the box. May not even take a touch on it. First-time crosses, that's what Watford are all about. Three across the middle, right on the right-hand side, Gunga through the middle, and Mooney, who's also been excellent for Watford. Birmingham's fans have already enjoyed their best league finish since they were relegated from the top division 13 years ago before she was born. But can they go all the way to Wembley? The returning hero, Trevor Francis, has steered them as close as possible to the Premiership. And for Watford, Graham Taylor returned to Vicarage Road, laying his reputation on the line. And he really is very much ahead of schedule in turning around that club. Tell what, Rob, what an atmosphere we've got here. St Andrew as well. There's going to be a lot of very, very saddened Blues fans if Birmingham don't do it tonight. Full of expectations. The sort of night when players don't need a motivating talk from the managers. The atmosphere will do it for them. playoffs was only too vividly displayed again at Portland Road last night. We'll be looking for a repeat of that here this evening. Strap yourselves in. Could be quite a white knuckle ride after the break. Birmingham or Watford are one game away from Wembley and that game kicks off in a matter of seconds. Your commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne.
Well, it was 15 years ago yesterday that Graham Taylor was leading Watford out at Wembley for the 1984 FA Cup final. Here they are on the brink of another visit to the famous old stadium, protecting a 1-0 lead from the first leg, which means that Birmingham are going to have to win by two clear goals. Unless at one minute to go to a penalty shootout at extra time, which would be the fate of these teams if Birmingham were to finish at the end of 120 minutes with just a one-goal advantage. Adebola and Andlove looking to ensure that that's not the case. Wow. I was just thinking, Robert, we're going to see some patient football tonight. Not a chance. Not with this atmosphere. Full house. And already Adebola putting himself about. Unlove trying the acrobatics. Surely this Watford goal is going to be under siege first 20 minutes. Well, it's a match that has to be won, and Trevor Francis has picked a starting lineup that he believes can do that job for him. Watford can afford a, a bit more of a patient approach, looking to absorb the crowd and the atmosphere, but Undlove trying to give them no room to settle. The challenge from Hyde is deemed illegal, and the free kick is given. Well, Unlove, you know, he's just trying to get out defenders as quick as possible. Little challenge, the slightest of pushes. But a vital free kick now, which Hughes looks as if he'll take. Everyone except Kevin Paul is inside the Watford half. Holdsworth in the penalty area. And Hughes it is who lifts it in, and it's knocked away by Johnson for a corner. That was a great ball, wasn't it? Fantastic ball by Brian Hughes. And all Birmingham pressure, good head on inside his own six-yard block from Johnson. Watford then conceding the first corner of the game, which Martin Granger will take here for Birmingham. Looked out by Andlove. This is McCarthy. And the header forward is by Hughes. Andlove looking to get on the end of it, and he got attached to it! And it's come back off the post! has been turned in and Watford can see the goal in two minutes I just wonder if this is Palmer who puts it through his own net this is unbelievable Adi Bola always misses it Palmer comes in whacks it off Adi Bola what a start from Birmingham this is good acrobatics from Unlove comes back off the post Adi Bola looks agonisingly as Palmer whacks it off the big Nigerian and Birmingham back on level terms and aggregate. 1-0 the lead Watford. Palmer could be an OG. And Trevor Francis looking for a bright start. That's the one. Now he's got it. Trevor Francis up and down the wing doing a Barry Fry. Could he have asked for a better start? Watford's breakthrough at Vicarage Road came inside the first five minutes. Birmingham's here has come inside the first two. Ah, Trevor, Trevor was, he couldn't believe it, come back off the post. And now Granger getting a ticking off, but Trevor, what a start. He was praying for a bright start, just like Watford done to Birmingham at Vicarage Road. But the Watford goal under siege in these opening three minutes. And suddenly Watford have it all to do again, and it's Kennedy to take the free kick for them. Cleared to hide. Well wide from Micah Hyde. I tell you what, Rob, we talk about the characters in this Watford side, how they've all stuck together, disciplined, full of enthusiasm, endeavour. Goodness me, they're going to need it now. Well, they've been so resilient this season of Watford. Many have been surprised that they've managed to stay the pace. But their resolve will be fully tested now. This is Undler. He's wriggled away from Micah Hyde. And he gets it across to McCarthy. And this is Furlong. Forced that line, but they prevented the corner. Wow. Incredible. One-way traffic at the moment. Four minutes gone. But Unlove does superb here. Just gets a touch past Chamberlain. Adi Bola looks if he's missed this. In comes Palmer. Well, could have been, may have even hit Adi Bola's elbow on his way into the net. Palmer, I'm sure, will be keen to give the credit to uh, Adi Bola. I, I think, on that angle there, I think that is Adi Bola's goal. Well, the uh, new haircut for Adi Bola. Wasn't his head that made 
contact with the ball, but delighted with the end result nonetheless. Well, for me, the next ten minutes are important for Watford. They've got to stand firm, because Birmingham, Addy Ball and company, mean moods. Straight out, keen to get on with it. Look at Trevor, he's saying, go on, quick, take it, get it down the wing. He knows how important this match is. I was talking to him earlier before the game and he was a bag of nerves, Trevor. Well, he came here with a three-year plan. He celebrated three years in charge at St Andrews earlier this month. That three-year plan was to get them into the Premiership. This will move them a step closer to that. It's over Furlong. Adebola too. Well, Fellon's got a lovely left foot, hasn't he? Not at the best of seasons this year, but strong, powerful, menacing in a type of game like this. And luck. Away goes Adebola. Palmer's across there with him. Goal kick. I think it's a good decision, I don't think anyone touches us. Palmer knows the presence, physical presence of Addy Ball, and Palmer's using his body well. It's a good decision. With this fellow, we said with Tottenham Rock before the game started, that when this little fellow's going to play off the front two, predominantly on the left-hand side, but will nick between them. He needs a ball. I think he's at a sparkle in six minutes. the 84 Cup final, they actually won here at Birmingham en route despite conceding uh, an own goal that day from uh, Steve Terry they won by three goals to one they also won their semi-final match in Birmingham at Villa Park against uh, Plymouth before losing to Everton in the final just, just wonder how Alec feels about that goal Rob you know, could he have come quicker, could have been more dominant but fair play to Unlove here's Hughes goes Adi Bowler up against Steve Palmer. Well, Steve Palmer, you know, he's come at the twilight, but he has Steve Palmer and he's got a real bat on his hands tonight. He's not the quickest, but he's full of commitment, 100%, honest. He's going to need them attributes tonight. Darren Baisley with the throw. This is Michelle Gunga, the man who scored the goal for Watford in the first leg. Nice physical battles out there tonight. Gunga, he's a strong, quick lad, but Michael Johnson, he's been an excellent season for Birmingham. We'll be watching him very closely. Well, these battles always riddled with uh, tension, and Birmingham's rear guard didn't perhaps perform to their best at the weekend. It was an edgy display, but that early goal for Birmingham will have settled them down, and Unlove is turning on all the style. Rowett. It's very important when Watford in attack get the ball wide that Birmingham don't allow them to cross the ball. It's so dangerous putting the ball in the box early. McCarthy. Cut out by Page. Tolsworth. Kennedy, but. Uh, Michelle Gunga is offside. Well, I think he's a little bit startled about the start that Birmingham had, but you can see clearly a couple of yards offside. Paul Clifton Johnson with the arms up. He doesn't think so. Well, what must Graham Taylor be thinking? His uh, team this season have been famed for their organisation and their discipline, and yet they lose their first leg advantage within the first two minutes of this match. Nick Wright. Watford's forwards who pressed so well in the first leg have barely been seen in the second leg so far. Bungo, the man who got the goal, but they had a couple of other efforts at the weekend which hit the woodwork, notably from Wright and from Mooney. There was a lot of chances in the match, wasn't there? You know, both ends. Mooney was so alert, so sharp. 
He's enjoying himself this season, hitting the post, very unlucky, but Birmingham had chances too, Adi Bola, I think should have scored. Johnson. Runder up against Michael Johnson, who's had a, an outstanding season for Birmingham. Yeah, he's not the tallest, is he? He's quick. He's got a lovely spring on him as well. When he sees the ball, he attacks it, concentrates. Good spring on him. Johnson's form has actually brought him to the attention of Jamaica, but unfortunately his uh, fall up to the squad has coincided with the playoffs, so it looks like he will miss their European tour. Birmingham have conceded a corner here, and after what happened in the first leg at Vicarage Road, they'll be particularly wary with Kennedy to take it. <laughs> a little race by the Birmingham fan, whistling away, because they know this fella puts in a great ball. Palmer joined the attack. Headed clear by Adibola. Yeah, I'm sure that was one of the reasons why Trevor stuck Big Deli Adibola in there. Watford are so dangerous on set pieces and crosses into the box. This fella can head the ball defensively or an attack. Leaping with Page, tidied up by Johnson. Rowett. Tell what, Rob, the Birmingham players are so charged up for this. As you said, no team top needed tonight. Wembley beckons. But on aggregate, it's level. goal for Birmingham as well as putting them in control of the tie would uh, reduce the uh, or completely erase the threat of a penalty shootout to settle the game this is Hughes cleared by Page yeah, we've seen a lot of Adi Bola Page keeping close to him but this fella's been a menace so far Furlong maybe he's the one who's been a bit quiet in the front three for Birmingham Head away by Baisley. Yeah, it's all defence, defend, defend, isn't it? For this Watford side, can't get forward, can't get into the rhythm. As Birmingham look alert, look sharp, moving the ball quickly, putting under pressure this Watford defence yet again. Hughes with a corner. Rowett leaps! Great chance, Rob. Great chance, seven yards out. That is a golden opportunity, and he knows it. Beautiful ball from Hughes. Rowett leaps between two players. Should hit the target. Maybe a little bit unlucky. Goes for power. Just doesn't get it down. But Chamberlain, I think, is beaten here. Lovely leap. Just can't keep it down. Aside from the uh, front three of Furlong, Adi Bowler and Underlove, Gary Rowett's actually Birmingham's leading scorer with seven goals. He uh, actually scored an own goal in one of the league meetings between these two teams earlier in the season. The one-all draw at Vicarage Road. And love, and that's a foul by Palmer, who's not had the happiest of nights so far. And it's about to get even less happy with the booking. Yeah, well, again, it's Adi Bola getting away from him. And that's, well, that's late. Unlove goes down in a heap. Palmer lashes out with the right leg. Clear yellow card, Palmer in trouble. It's the first caution of the match to be issued by Dave Pugh, who wasn't the man in charge for the uh, first leg. They do change the match officials. I think that was an easy decision by David Pugh. Just saying it, Palmer, come on, eh? Calm down, calm down. It's a frantic start, we know. No more of that, or it's off, son. The stakes are high in these games, as well as the uh, red card in the first leg. There were six other yellows issued. It's a dangerous, dangerous situation here, Rob, because Birmingham to several players here as Graham Taylor looks on anxiously. But Rowett might fancy his chances here. Or Granger with his, his fantastic left foot. McCarthy's just lurking over to the right there, getting some instructions from Holsworth. Ranger, Rowett, Hughes and O'Connor, the four over the ball. McCarthy think, seems to want it place for him. I think Rowett's in, Granger, go on, back. It is 
Granger, and it's off the wall. This is O'Connor. Birmingham felt that Kennedy came out of the wall pretty quickly, but they've got a corner anyway. Yeah, it's a good, a good block from Kennedy. Granger saying it struck his arm, but Kennedy's the first to react. Out he comes, I don't think that's handball at all. And yet another corner for Birmingham. Hughes, the taker of the corner. And it's gone on Palmer for another. Yeah, a little bit disappointing there for Brian Hughes. His corner a moment ago on the head of row was super. This time, just pulled it slightly, but gets another chance. There's a trio of defenders in the box plotting Rowett, Holdsworth and Michael Johnson, but it's played short to unlove. Curled in this time by Hughes to Holdsworth. For a little bit of advantage there. Referee David Pugh, two yards away. Same free kick. Far long this time tracking back. That's been action packed. Look at this. 50% in Watford's final third. Birmingham starting the match in determined fashion to steamroller their opponents. Still that. One early breakthrough separates the sides this evening. And nothing separates them on aggregate. Right. Tackled by Granger. Here's O'Connor. Undler. Granger. O'Connor just has the edge on Adibola this time. Mooney. Cleared by Granger. This is Baisley. Mooney on to right. Watford just, just beginning to find a little bit of pattern now, Watford. It's all first touch, you know, they're just helping on, helping on, but at least they're stemming this flow, this Birmingham, a solid attack, coming wave after wave at them. And Watford came into the playoffs as very much the underdogs, but... They're unbeaten in their last 11 matches since their 3-0 defeat at Sheffield United back on the 6th of March. McCarthy. Oh, he's unlucky there. Didn't spot Kennedy doubling up on him. Tried to put it in behind Gibb after a good run from Rowe. Unlucky John McCarthy. for Birmingham. Good recovery by Nigel Gibbs. He's looking for Adibola with the throw, but it's from behind for the goal kick. Oh. Page there, keeping it close to Furlong. Long throw again to the near post. Furlong gets in front of Page. Looks a corner to me. Surely, clearly, Page heads this ball out. side and already Palmer Page piling into the box there's only one place this is going well an away goal for Watford would put an entirely different picture on it no wonder Palmer is so keen to join the attack the free kick has been left for Gibbs now Johnson with a head of clear Baisley a good defender from Rowett being strong has to be strong against Gonga. 
Mugunga's complaining to the referee. Adamant that that was a push from Rowett, but Rowett was strong and tough. Here's Johnson with the corner. Palmer's made a run for him. And it's headed against him by Adibola, is it? No, not a corner given. Oh, that was a good ball from Johnson. Palmer doesn't get enough on, and Adi Bola's back there helping out. Well, it looked like a goal kick. So Watford just getting a little bit rubber the green in this last minute. At both ends. Johnson to try his luck again. Page has only ever scored one goal for Watford, is in there. Well, the goalkeeper came and it was Mooney who got there. Tell you what, I think the goalkeeper Kevin Poole's a little bit fortunate here. Makes his mind out he come, but look at Mooney get in front. Well, to be fair to Poole, he does get one punch on it. It's not a great punch, or does Mooney just get a touch on it? It's crystal clear that Watford on set pieces, extremely dangerous. Tommy Mooney scored in the 2-1 victory here last month. Birmingham haven't beaten Watford in three meetings this year. A draw at Vicarage Road, and two defeats for Birmingham. One away, and one at home. to go here's Johnson Gibbs looking for Nick Wright and Gibbs just flinging it in right was playing right hand side of the front three coming in on the far post the greens are strong here he knows Wright's coming stands tall maybe Granger gets a touch on that the referee says no goal kick in the last few minutes that Watford have started to step it up but Unlove here has proved the danger man and draws Chamberlain to the edge of his area again I think Chamberlain's going to be, have to be almost playing like a sweeper because Birmingham have pace up there but quicker than the two Watford centre-backs Paddy Bowler Johnson this is Gibbs for the throw and Birmingham's midfield three have really got to keep the pressure on McCarthy or Connor Hughes got to keep getting a foot in and pushing this Watford midfield back as you say Rob Watford are now beginning to get the you know find the stride get the pattern now passing the ball Hyde Paisley headed away by Johnson to Richard Johnson it's a chance and he knows it holding his head on his left foot but Beasley does well, finds a couple of yards space. It comes off Johnston, and then Richard Johnson, well, that's well wide. Pull with his arms up, he's got his angles right. That was half a chance. Aimed for his uh, shots from 20 yards and more, Richard Johnson. Well, that's definitely an elbow there. Brian Hughes clearly going down. Kennedy the culprit. Referee's going to have a chat. This could be naughty. I think the elbow's up. Watch Hughes's face. Bang. Forearm smash. Referee was close by. Hughes is still down. Looks like another yellow. Following Steve Palmer into the book. Incidentally, there's uh, no cumulative effect of uh, yellow cards in the playoffs. If you're booked in the first and the second leg, it doesn't rule you out of the final. But if you're to get a red card, then it does rule you out of the next match as uh, Paul Robinson is finding tonight sent off in the first leg and missing this game well, that would be a blow for Watford you know a couple of players booked they've got to be very careful that's the way they play they're tough they press hard they tackle hard surely with 10 men in this cauldron it would be very very difficult Rout it is who's got the free kick in Towards Furlong, Unlove, Adibola, and Gibbs hits it against Unlove. 
Well, it's quite incredible. We talk about Watford, how good they are at set pieces, but they're really having a problem defending against Birmingham. Great header from Furlong, almost falls to Adiabola, and then Unlove's in there, and eventually smashed off them. This ball could go anyway. Gibbs whacks it off Unlove, and that could have ended up in the back of the net. Furlong's got a good, strong header here. Adiabola causing problems again. Unlove maybe offside. But boy, another let off for Watford. Trevor Francis's uh, gamble to play all three strikers is uh, at his disposal, is uh, paying off handsomely at the moment. Although Francis is more immediately concerned about the award of a Watford free kick. Hughes was a little bit late, there was nothing nasty, but he was slightly late. The referee, in my opinion, correct. Page to take. Gunga just having a little go there at Page, just saying, hey, give us a chance, no way was it getting anywhere near that. Johnson. Here's Baisley. has gone up on the outside of him. Looking for Gunga with a cross, it was taken out of the goalkeeper's hands by Holdsworth. Well, could have been trouble there if Nick Wright's first touch had been better. Cleared this time by Michael Johnson. Furlong, Umbla, Adibola is up to his right, Furlong is looking to join him. Cleared by Page, only back to Peter Unglove. And now Hyde with some effective pressure. Effective pressure, but a little bit tame there from Unlove. You'd think with his pace and ability, they're going clear there. I just thought he'd give the ball up a little bit easier there. Right. this season as Birmingham made such a flying start to the campaign. I like the new barman, the new haircut, certainly I think he's been very, very good and he's opened in 27 minutes. Look to men is sharp, strong, and involved in all the Birmingham's attacks. Birmingham are joint leaders in the table after the uh, opening day of the season with Wolves and they were actually the last leaders of the first division before Sunderland took over and dominated right up to the end. Furlong. Furlong's now finding the leaks. Good partnership, Adi Bola there, number four. Unlove, just trying to spark off Furlong, the three of them together. Hughes with the corner. Now looking to climb, Mooney got in front of him, it's Granger who can hit them. It's cleared by Richard Johnson. Gunga just delayed and that allowed Hughes to get back. Gunga again complaining bitterly about his treatment. Yeah, he looks a bit unhappy, Michelle Gunga, doesn't he? No, nothing's gone right for him so far. looking Graham Taylor at the moment but things can change so quickly in football as he well knows 10 years in charge of Watford from 77 to 87 this division then proved the hardest to get out of in their climb from the basement it took them three years McCarthy with a header back and Rowett can leave it so McCarthy you know if he's not flying down the wing getting crosses and he does this well he lets the ball bounce could have been trouble doesn't panic holds a Defender, the attacker off, and good neat header back to his goalkeeper. 
Barkley will have to get back here and defend as well because Kennedy will bomb forward. The more the game goes on, Watford are behind, Kennedy will keep getting in advanced positions. That's why McCarthy's so good, getting back, doubling up, helping his fullback. It's Richard Johnson. Well, Michael Johnson's gone down in a heap there. I think it was in Gunga again who was involved in it. The Birmingham players are furious. Johnson again, this is his second chance. You can see there's a bit of a tramp on him there. And Johnson again, hopelessly off target for someone with such a good strike under the ball. Yeah, Johnson's still down. This will be worrying for Trevor Francis. You can clearly see Johnson's in a lot of pain. Michelle Gunga, I think, just sort of caught studs maybe down the back of his Achilles. He's all right. But Johnston, certainly not. Look at the agony in his face. Well, looked a trip to me. Johnson again, wide of the mark. Again on his left foot, off balance. For someone who can hit such a ferocious striker. And poor old uh, Michael Johnson is still suffering. He's been a consistent member of the team this season. Missed only one league game throughout the campaign. Trevor Francis unable to select him then because of suspension. Johnson is one of the players, one of the five players in the Birmingham team with top division experience. Started his career playing his first few games there for Notts County. Kevin Poole, Gary Rowett, Paul Furlong and Peter Undler have all played at the top level. Poole, of course, has been in a couple of playoff finals with Leicester City. Kennedy. Rowett. Adebola has helped it on, and Unlove is looking to get there. Unlove, he's just taking chances, isn't he? He's coming in off the left wing. Anytime the ball's near either to Adebola or this time Furlong, in he goes, almost trying to get his left foot to it again. Holdsworth, Gibbs, oh they all left it to each other as it veered wide, well I think this is bad goalkeeping here from Kevin Poole, this is Kevin Poole's ball for me, it's on the six yard line, it's a great ball in, and you see Mooney's right in there, but the keeper comes, he stops, always oh, is to come in again, oh that's indecision, that could have been costly, great ball, and Watford will do this all night, Johnson holding off Mooney, and Poole looks at his defenders, Smashing, curling, right-footed ball from Gibb. Boy, that's a layoff. You can see Johnson touching Kevin uh, Mooney. Undlove, Furlong. McCarthy looking for Adebola. Granger's there to help him out. Martin Granger pulls it across, cleared by Palmer. That was a great header there from Page. He looked second best there, but no, Watford skipper won the ball. Some good service at the box on both sides now. Adibola. I'm sure Trevor was absolutely delighted with the opening few minutes getting the opening goal, but since then it's very, very well. Watford are coming into the game more. Well, Wembley, the incentive for these two teams tonight. Manchester United and Newcastle already there, and you'll see the FA Cup final live on Sky Sports 2. Hope you'll join us for the start of our coverage Saturday at midday. This is Birmingham City's first ever experience of the playoffs. They and Manchester City, the two novices in this year's competition. As Hyde blocked by O'Connor. Manchester City, of course, already at Wembley. Can Birmingham follow them on that route? The two clubs have become the 68th and 69th clubs to be involved in the playoffs since they were introduced 12 years ago. This is Richard Johnson. Right. Gunga, Hyde and Mooney in the middle. Poole holds on. 
good play there for Watford in the midfield area. Johnson involved. Eventually the ball finds it to Wright. Granger just holding them up. But Wright just gets half a yard, dinks it in, and Poole had to watch it carefully. Andler in slides high. This is Granger. Clearance by Page. McCarthy. Cut away from Kennedy. Adebola has to retreat to collect it. Granger with the throw. Head away by Page. Hughes. Page again, the Watford captain. It's Holdsworth. And he and uh, Gunga have had one or two skirmishes over the two games. Gunga sent the down to eight. He jumped into Holdsworth there. Referee let it go. And love. Cleared by Gibbs. Rowett. McCarthy. Cleared by Gibbs. This is O'Connor. Now Hughes. I think John McCarthy had a good chance to get a good ball and then he'll be disappointed. Found himself a few yards. Good run, a good testing run. Crowded out in the end, he caused a, a lot of damage with his forward uh, movement to the weekend, did Darren Baisley. They were uh, keen to restrict those movements this evening. Who's got it away? Yeah, Birmingham just a little bit like it is ago there on the far side, letting Watford get the ball in the box. They can't afford to do this. 37 minutes gone. It's, it seems like 10 minutes. This half has flown by. Holdsworth being challenged again by Gunga. And Birmingham are very unhappy with the treatment being meted out to Holdsworth by Gunga and they're looking for some protection from Dave Pugh. Well, that's the second one in three minutes, Rob. You know, we commented on it. He dived into Holdsworth a few minutes ago. Now he's done it again, and another Watford player's going in the boot. No chance of the ball, not even looking at the ball. And that's a yellow, surely, from David Pugh. He's got to give it. Unhappy night so far for this chap. Turn around, give us your number. Well, that's the danger when the stakes are so high and... Niggling confrontations have taken place in the first leg, and the second leg comes up so quickly. Well, you know, it was silly because he, he was jumping for the ball, he's not even looking. You know, he's looking at the play, you can see him looking at Holdsworth. Thumps into the back, referee 10 yards away. He can't get away with that. Well, he's continued his protest to the referee. Made a great run to his left. Paisley just favoured with the ball that was played. I think he took an off there, Beasley. Granger's a tough tackling defender. Brave defending, though, from Beasley, but took an off for his troubles. Good player, Beasley, when he's going forward. Helped on by Adebola. Furlong. He's unlucky there for long. Backed into the centre half, uses his body strength. Referee given a corner. I can't see why, to be honest. But look at this. Backs in. Page and Palmer there. Corner given. Much to the dismay of Alec Chamberlain. Rowett's had one free header from the corner already. I'm looking to ensure that the same doesn't happen again. And there was just a little push there by Holdsworth. Not surprisingly, it was on Gunga, and that's why the Watford players are crowding around the referee, hoping that uh, he'll treat like with like, having booked Gunga already. Oh, gone berserk, haven't they? Holmes was going to be called over to the ref, but interesting to see there's a yellow card here. Oh, 
Carl Long saying, what's going on? David Hall just saying, well, I don't know. Did you see him there? Yeah, maybe a slight right, maybe the right elbow come a little bit close to Gunga's nose. Uh, Holdsworth looked all innocent when the referee was trying to call him towards him. But it hasn't got him off the hook. Well, he's took two challenges on Marcel, a little smile now, got you back once. Now he's got to be careful, well they both have. Both on a yellow card, despite the shake of the hand now. Could be crucial later on. Francis just showing a lovely first touch there. back to the, 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 the player coming up to support, bang, straight in the box with it. Oh, it's a late one by Hughes on Richard Johnson. Yeah, it's, it's getting a little bit nasty out there. A little bit nasty, it's late again. McCarthy does well, but Hughes come flying in, bang, down goes Johnson. Gets off with ticking off, no card for Brian Hughes. Maybe a bit fortunate. in the first leg, including the two given to Paul Robinson, four already tonight. I think there's something to stay with you, Rob. Know, Watford beginning to hold their own now, you know, a great start for Birmingham. It's been inside the last five minutes. Watford are still dangerous. Well, just that little matter of a Wembley date with Bolton lurking for the winners of this match. I think Trevor felt tonight they had to match Watford's fitness, enthusiasm, enthusiasm and hard work. But they've certainly done that. Birmingham have matched them man for man. Here's Undlove. Cleared by Page. Rowett. Well, the three of them were all bunched together as the ball floated past. Well, you'd expect Eddie Ball and Furlong to go for it. But Unlove himself got in amongst them, three of them, all in a heap. He knew it was going to be tough, Trevor. That's certainly the way it's working out, but his side have drawn themselves level on aggregate. this time a push from Holdsworth this is dangerous this is what Watford put so much time and effort on the training ground into situations like this Richard Johnson to the right of the ball but Kennedy here to try and test Paul well, Paul dies away to his left but I don't think that was going well not even close he can hit them this fella though Suddenly, there's three players in front of Poole, that's why he's taking the dive, just to make sure he had it covered. He was the club's top scorer last season, Peter Kennedy with uh, 13 goals, seven this year. Hughes. Headed by Page, Furlong looking to race onto it. Linesman had a good spot. Linesman looking right across the pitch, Furlong using his hand. Just when you thought maybe the legs on Palmer there. Palmer scurrying back. Furlong, is it a hand used? Oh yes. Johnson, Gibbs. Holdsworth. is Mooney, Kennedy. Gibbs. Mooney. McCarthy. Furlong.
two minutes of stoppage time to be added on in the first period. Yeah, I think Graham Taylor, you know, after five minutes, Rob thought, they got second here, we're going to get bombed. And he'll be a little bit more comfortable now. Watford battling back into this match. Furlong. Well, I think he's entitled to have a go there. The corner on the overlap, Paul Furlong suddenly just drops them. With his left foot, he thinks, why not? I'll just feel for the goal. Doesn't look. A corner on support, and the shot wide. Watford's leading goal scorer for two seasons between 1992 and 94, Paul Furlong. Made them a healthy uh, £2 million profit when he moved on to Chelsea. Ranger. Here's that Ebola. Breaks down disappointingly as it's given away to Micah Hyde. This is right. Ranger. Ranger's, I think he's handled right superbly in this first half. Baddy Bola was getting back there in support, doubling up, helping out. Right. Michael Johnson. Again, recovers well. Well, he's been outstanding for Birmingham this season. I'm sure when he was down injured ten minutes ago, Trevor Francis would have been concerned. But back to his feet, running, looks like got over that knock. a very scrappy opening goal in the first two minutes of the contest. Peter Rundlove it was who did all the hard work lifting the ball over Paul, but as Palmer tried to clear, it hit Adebola. Trevor Francis not particularly bothered who's claiming it. He's just delighted that his team are in front. But they need another, and the tension is bound to mount in the second half if it doesn't come early. At half-time, 1-0 to Birmingham, 1-all on aggregate. I fire like this! Another big day of live sport coming up for you tomorrow on our three Sky Sports channels. There's live World Cup cricket from 10.30 over on Sky Sports 1 as the West Indies take on Bangladesh. Here on Sky Sports 2, there's live horse racing from Bath and Stratford tomorrow uh, from 6.30, followed by live US Tour Golf at 9. And over on Sky Sports 3 tomorrow morning from 9.30, there's live golf from the European Tour and live Super League. Leeds against Halifax from 7 o'clock tomorrow night. That's just part of another big day of live sport coming up for you tomorrow on our three Sky Sports channels. The facts of the match so far, it's 1-0 to the home side, but Watford have had more attempts on goal. Plenty of fouls, plenty of bookings, three for Watford, one for Birmingham. As yet, no one sent off. First half action areas, most of it in the Watford penalty area, but it's pretty even despite the fact that Birmingham are a goal to the good. Watford score another goal, Nigel Spackman, and uh, it's all, well, it's all turned up, isn't it? Two goals they have to score then. Yes, they would, but at the moment uh, they're obviously in the driving seat again, Birmingham, being at home, but if Watford get that goal, as you say, it could be the same as last night with Ipswich, you know, everything to play for and uh, I mean, Birmingham scoring a couple more goals, which they haven't been scoring goals at home, really. Uh, they made up for lost time, didn't they? Less than two minutes for the first. Just the start they wanted, really. And I think at the start of the game, it was all Birmingham. It's a poor, poor header out, really, by Micah Hyde there. And then 
um, Alex Chamberlain in the goal doesn't come off his line quick enough and Peter in love with his pace gets there first and then this is just I mean that's handball really but uh, obviously it's gone in off uh, Adi Bola and they're 1-0 up but here Alex Chamberlain he, he's going backwards instead of coming out to meet the ball he's going backwards and in love with his pace gets in thinks it over him he thinks that's gone in but Adi Bola reacts quickly and he's in the back of the net and what a start for Birmingham here we can see it from behind the goal he, he doesn't come out quick enough for me anyway I don't know what Dina thinks I think he comes and stops I think is it going to bounce further or shall I shall I it doesn't really make a dec decisive decision and he and it's ended up costing them and it's the worst possible start Watford could have wanted and uh, obviously a great start for Birmingham well whatever it was, it was handball whether it was um, the goalkeeper's error it was a very happy moment for one Trevor Francis oh that's what he's been hoping for all night he wanted to start high tempo every ball that's gone out he's got it thrown it back to players come on let's get on with it and they started a high tempo and got their rewards he must have thought that uh, the game plan was going exactly according to plan at that moment yeah I mean the atmosphere was electric but before we came out and um, they've gone straight into it every ball Birmingham were first two and I'm sure Graham Taylor will have a few asked words to say with his team because they seem to be uh, subdued by the atmosphere where Birmingham rose to the occasion and uh, after the goal you know Watford did well really to actually sustain just one goal really with the goal there was a suspicion of handball or would you uh, call I, it ball to hand I think it's ball to hand I, I don't think uh, the bowler is going to tap that in it's been it's been kicked at him and his hands there and it's gone in the net it was very unlucky actually with a clearance um, but it's not definitely not a handball well, you must have been thinking, especially if you were Alec Chamberlain, here come the cavalry. Uh, yes. And they hit back, didn't they, Boom? They kept coming. They did, but I, th I think it took them about 20 minutes to get back into it um, to Watford. But this is Gary Rowett's header over from the corner. They just kept powering forward. Good movement. And Rowett gets away. He's clear there and really should hit the target. A man of his class who scored seven goals this season. You expect him to hit the target there. But Birmingham did keep coming at Watford. And it took Watford 20 minutes, really, to string three passes together. No goals, though. No extra goals, although a clearance off the line could so easily have made it 2-0. Yes, it could have done. I mean, uh, Birmingham have been powering the ball into the box. And um, there's a header down, lots of bodies there. But actually, I think the linesman does give offside. Yeah. Uh, Nigel Gibbs is a little bit fortunate that his clearance has uh, not gone in off for love. And it, another way, it could have been a, another goal. But it was offside. But this is what Birmingham have been good at. They've been getting bodies in the box, big ball into Ed Ebola. And, um, you know, they've been powerhouses really and Watford have say done well to just sustain one goal. We saw uh, in the match facts earlier on that it's actually Watford who had the more attempts on goal, five to three. Yeah but Kevin Poole hasn't really been called upon. I think all of them have been a high, a wide, not none testing the goalkeeper so far. And I think Graham would be in there at half time saying look 45 minutes gone. It's all level. We've got at least another 45 minutes to go. Let's make sure we test this keeper a little bit more because we haven't really put him under that much pressure yet. None of them on target of course the Watford efforts. This I think the closest of them, Johnson. Yeah, Johnson, it's a good move, actually. This is, this is the most probably one of the best moves. It's a poor header out. And Johnson, on his weaker left foot, I mean, scored some wonderful goals on his right foot this season. He gets really caught under his feet and has to take it on his left foot and tries to actually bend it with the outside of his left foot into the, in the near post. But he couldn't, it wouldn't come across him quick enough to get a right foot on it. So Trevor Francis presumably is saying, we'll have more of the same, but score oh, some goals, would you mind? Yeah. What's Chip Graham Taylor saying? I think you say, pick yourselves up from that. You've, um, you're level now. You can score a goal, and it will be very important if they do score actually score a goal. Um, just raise your game, play like you have been playing. Why you've got, gone nine games unbeaten, and um, show us what you're made of. I think I think the worry for Birmingham is that they've had so much of the pressure, so much of the possession as well, had the better chances, but they haven't scored that second goal, and they're not scoring enough goals at home. And Watford have actually scored more goals away from home than Birmingham have actually scored at home. So it's all to play for. Birmingham fans were happy before. They're happy still. Remember, it's extra time and penalties if needs be. The second half is coming up. Saturday is Cup Final Day and Sky's coverage starts on Sky Sports 2 at 8 in the morning with Good Morning Wembley. At half past 8, there's a Soccer AM FA Cup Final special also on Sky Sports 2. And also on Sky Sports 2, you can see the whole game, Manchester United versus Newcastle from 12. Well, uh, the match started in a great atmosphere, and I, it seemed in, in good spirit, Dean, but uh, around about halfway through the second half, it all seemed to get a bit knifey. It did. Um, there's a few bad tackles flying in, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, 
We see a deficit of one or two players in the second half. If things start to get a bit hairy, um, there's a few bad tackles flying in, and uh, the referee's got to be very careful that he handles the game properly now. What about this bloke? You had him as a captain at Sheffield United. Yeah. I know he's Dean's brother, but he was involved in some of the controversy. Well, Gongi actually uh, gave him twice, did him twice off the ball, which we got booked for one, and then David Aldridge got one back. So, you know, it's going to get a little bit like that if it stays as it is. We'll be keeping an eye on it, Dean. <laughs> uh, time to rejoin our commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. The Watford must have uh, feared when they conceded such an early goal that the floodgates might have opened. But they come out for the start of the second half with the same 11 with which they started, as do Birmingham. And just uh, trailing to that scrappy goal that they conceded in the second minute. But Birmingham need another at the moment. If it was to stay this way after extra time, we would need penalties. But one goal for either time would, for either side, would eradicate the need for a penalty shootout. Birmingham don't actually uh, have the greatest record against Watford. They've won two of the last 15 meetings in all competitions. Both of those were by a single goal. And they haven't actually uh, beaten them by more than a one-goal margin since September 1983, when both teams were in the top division and Robert Hopkins and Mickey Halsell scored for Birmingham. Just feel, Rob, the first 15 minutes is so important for either side. If Trevor Say can go and get a second goal, that could be crucial. But if Watford get one back, goodness me, it could be an uphill struggle for the Blues. Granger having to hold off Gunga, the man who was at the centre of so much of the first half controversy, and himself became one of the four players to be booked. There's Holdsworth, with whom he became entangled. Rowett. I think that's what Birmingham have got to do, try and get the ball over the head of Page uh, and Palmer and use, you know, the, the forwards pace, they've definitely got the upper hand in that department. But Watford are pressing hard in the midfield area. And Andlove is offside, it was a very late flag. He's carrying on, the referee hasn't spotted the flag, but it had been up for quite a time. Wakey, wakey referee, the flag was up. Look at this, this is tight. That is not offside, no chance. It's not offside, and that the referee doesn't even look at his linesman. Unlove doesn't hear the whistle, because the referee's not blowing it, comes inside, rightly so, and suddenly the ref looks to his left and sees the flag up. Poor decision from the linesman. <laughs> the linesman down below is just getting pelters from the Birmingham bench. Time. Looks great pace, even catching the officials out. Gibbs, Kennedy. Gary Rowett with the throw. Member of the promoted Derby team three years ago. Adibola cleared by Gibbs. Holdsworth, over hits it, but Paul will get there. Well, if you're going to over hit a back pass, it's best that it's not directly at the goal, it was well wide of the goal. I just feel this is where Birmingham have got to be careful as well, Rob, giving silly free kicks away. You, know, you don't want to play into Watford's hands, and this is their strong point as far as I'm concerned. Set pieces, and Granger's now in trouble for having a little bit of back chat. Well, Martin O'Connor, his uh, captain, is protesting on his behalf, pointing out to the uh, referee the reason why he's protesting. And again, it doesn't save uh, Granger from the punishment of a yellow card. I'll remind you that any player sent off would miss the final. It's Kennedy with a free kick, and it's a great ball in there. What a chance that is for Mooney, what a chance. Great ball again in the box. Class from Kennedy. Oh, and that's why Birmingham can't give free kicks away, silly. Paisley. Cleared by Johnson. There's O'Connor. Hyde. Page. That's Gibbs. Cleared by Rowett. 
Birmingham's defence facing a severe bout of pressure at the start of the second half. Can they withstand it? This is Gunga up against Rowett. Mini had a great chance here. What a delivery. Look at this. Mini gets in behind. And he just can't twist his body and head the ball. Goal bound. Well, Richard Johnson is the Watford player lying on the ground as Hughes brings it clear for Birmingham. Undler. Held through by Mooney. Johnson suddenly, he's, well, the referee's not going to stop it, so he's had a look around. He's, he's certainly taken a knock in the back of the head, Richard Johnson. No, I, I don't think this is acting. I think he's in trouble. I really do. I think he's in trouble. It's a, de it's a delayed reaction. He's taken a knock in the head. Look at this. Bad control there. Johnson. I think it's, you can see, bang, it's the knee right in the back of Johnson's head. McCarthy just catches him here, bang, and that's why that's a delayed reaction, he's got a problem. Well, one can only imagine that uh, the referee didn't instantly realise it was a, a head injury because normally they're very quick to stop the play. I think it was difficult for the ref, Rob, you know, because McCarthy nicked the ball first, there was a slight contact, but then McCarthy's left knee thumped right into the back of the head for Johnson. But Mooney, before that, he knows this is a good chance. Great ball in the box from Kennedy, left-footed, curling towards the goal, and Mooney just mistimes it, with only the goalkeeper to beat. This is Watford's best chance. Free header, heads it wide. Well, he scored against Birmingham here last month, starting that magnificent run of seven goals in a run of six matches. You almost expect everything he touches to turn to goal, the form he's been in. Otherwise, I just wonder if Watford are going to have to make a sub. I think Johnson's in trouble. Certainly, it could be concussion. It was a whack right in the back of the head. Left knee. And that's why Graham Taylor's looking so concerned. You can see clearly this fella's got a problem. McCarthy nicks the ball. The initial contact, and there is initial contact, is nothing. Just there. That's not. Now watch. Bang. Let's hope he's OK. Well, he's uh, looking like he intends to carry on Richard Johnson of course nationwide league managers don't have the luxury of their premiership counterparts and being able to name five substitutes and Graham Taylor amongst his three tonight has named a goalkeeper Chris Day it's uh, difficult to know what sort of uh, contingencies you're going to have to plan for maybe Chris Day is a top penalty on the run that uh, Leicester playoff final of uh, a couple of years ago when Kevin Poole was actually taken off and replaced by Kalach and then the uh, match didn't even go to penalties. It was settled by a late goal from Steve Claridge. Adebola helping it into the path of Furlong who seemed to be checked on his run through. I'll tell you what, Johnson's all right now, you can tell by that. That was sharp defending from Johnson. Adebola with a strike! And it was a wicked effort. This time he gets it on his left foot. And this is not too far away, is it? Johnson with the clearance. The touch from Hughes is... Well, he just gets another little nick on it. And Adi Bola, first time, goes to the far post. Not too far away at all. Good hustling from Brian Hughes. Page ducks and just over the crossbar. Adi Bola, fierce left foot he's got. He's looking for a dip. And just when it dips, too late. Well, the goal that he has scored was a, a messy scrambled effort. He was looking for a... Greater quality finish there. Uh, I tell you what, Holdjoff could be in trouble here. Could be in trouble. The linesman's got his flag up, and this could be big trouble for David Holdsworth. This could be a red. And this oh. is going to be chaos for Birmingham. The linesman spotted it. David Holdsworth shaking his head. I think it could be bye bye. Well, what a horrendous moment this is going to be for David Holdsworth because the referee is reaching for his pocket. He was booked in the first half after a skirmish with Gunga, and his latest clash with the same player is going to lead to a second yellow, a consequent red, and if Birmingham are to get to the playoff final, then David Holdsworth will not be appearing in it. Well, I feel for David, I feel for his twin in the commentary box, studio, but is there an elbow up here? The linesman's adamant there is. You can see 
the linesman clearly up went the flag again these two have been battling all through it did well the left arm's up is it an elbow Gungo goes straight to the ground but the linesman made the referee's decision for him flag went up referee went over and out come the red card Trevor now what does he do does he reshuffle I think he's got to discussing there with Ian Bowyer the uh, it's quite a little tactical implication. I think it's quite simple, Rob. Darren Pross must come on, and one of the forward players will come off. Let's have a look at the left arm. Now, nah, that's not a sending off. David Ellsworth, he's jumped with his arm up, but it's not a blatant elbow. And I think the linesman's got it wrong. And I think he's in for a bit of stick in a minute. Well, the uh, referee was relying on the advice that he was taking from Mike Cairns' his assistant. To Rob, the two of them have been battling away for you know, 54 minutes. And when you jump, a centre half must jump with his arm up. A forward must jump with your arm up. That's where you get your leverage from, and you protect yourself. Yes, the arm made contact, but it wasn't a blatant elbow like David Dunn to earn his first yellow card. Uh, what a bit of blow it will be for David Holdsworth. His third year running in the playoffs, he's uh, suffered disappointment before. Losing the final of 97 with Sheffield United, losing out in the semi-finals last year. And of course, he uh, played in the playoffs with uh, Watford ten years ago when they went out on away goals. But here come Watford looking to make the extra man pay. I tell you what, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, I really don't think they did it all just going to be his own here. This is going to, this is going to explode. But I think Rob, I think what might happen is Cross might come on and one of the big boys might come off from Adibola because at least Unlove's got his pacing up and back, he can help the midfield up, he can help them out and still spark up maybe the lone striker. Well, McCarthy's playing back here, right back at the moment, Rout has had to slip into the centre of defence to cover for their uh, departed colleague. Yeah, Trevor's just looking around the box, looking at his subs, he's definitely going to... He's definitely going to change it. Yes, yeah, Darren Purse has just reached for his shirt. I just think it'll be unfair if Adibola comes off. It'll be unfair because I think Adibola's done well up there. We'll have to see what Trevor does, but I'm sure one of the strikers will come off. Well, here goes the change, and John McCarthy is the player who's uh, going to make way for Darren Purse. McCarthy looks uh, disgruntled, to say the least, but uh, the manager has made his decision and has opted to stick with the three-man strike force of Adebola, Furlong and Undler. Well, that's a brave decision. Trevor must feel that Adebola's doing well. Furlong's a threat in there, and Unlove, the first ten minutes, was superb. Well, it's uh, got to be caution to the wind time in these circumstances for Birmingham. Purse comes on with instructions. Has this given Watford the advantage now? Well, they're looking for Mooney. Michael Johnson was quickly across to close him down. I just think maybe Trevor's decision was caused that Watford, in Nick Wright, he didn't do a lot first half, Nick Wright, for me. I thought he was going to be a threat down that side where McCarthy could help Rowett out. So maybe Trevor feels that we're right, not having a particularly good first half. OK, we'll take a chance. That's why John McCarthy's gone. Well, Birmingham couldn't make the one-man advantage uh, pay with a goal when Watford were reduced to ten men in the first leg, so can Watford do any better now? Gibbs with the throw. Cleared by Putz. Here's Adebola. And love. This is Martin O'Connor. Rowett. Palmer. Well, he was put under pressure. It's gone for the goal kick. As part of our panel tonight is David Holdsworth's brother, Dean, and I'm sure, uh, Dean, you must feel for your brother. 
I'm absolutely devastated for him. Um, it was a very innocuous challenge. Um, Davies jumped up for the ball. I know he's led with the arm, but I don't think there was any intent there whatsoever. Uh, you can see both players have jumped up with their arm. And I think the, gong the Gongi's played it well. Um, maybe David caught him or not. There's no intent there. And David's not stupid enough to know that he's already been on a booking. He's not stupid enough to know that he's gonna get, not going to get sent off if he does anything stupid. And I don't think there was any intent whatsoever. Um, like I say, I'm very devastated for him. And he'll be devastated that uh, he's, you know, he'll feel he's let his teammates down. But he'll, you know, hopefully they'll go on now and uh, get something from that game. Watford started the game very well. Um, we did say in the first half that we thought someone might be, you know, the tackles are flying in, and um, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's been David, and I'm absolutely devastated for him. Well, you wonder just how much the officials were influenced by the skirmishes that had uh, gone on between those two, leading up to that I don't last think, incident. I don't think the ref would have sent them after all. I think the linesman, you know, with the linesman flashing up his flag as quick as a, you know, from up at Wayne, the referee had to go and talk to the linesman. That's the problem. Here's Baisley. Paul watches it go behind. Well, this is what Watford need more of. Down the wide, getting balls in the box, which Birmingham have stopped them doing. They've had a few set pieces. Graham Taylor, well, he's about to give the old glasses a clean there. But Graham now must feel much more comfortable. After three minutes of this match, Birmingham got the breakthrough, and then it was all one-way traffic. Suddenly, it's amazing how quickly the game can change. Looking down at the bench there, Trevor is devastated, shaking his head, can't believe it. Well, on such decisions, the uh, fates of teams can rest. This is Curse the substitute. Well, he would have uh, hoped for a diverting connection from Furlong, but it was just beyond him. Well, you know, you have to see him all first, almost his first touch, driving it forward, but this could have dropped it far long. Really, there's not been a lot of action in terms of Kevin Poole's had to deal with. Look at the possession, absolutely level, 50-50. But for Birmingham, Kevin Poole hasn't really been called into action yet. It's a foul by Darren Cole, Son Mooney, in a dangerous position here for Birmingham. Well, a few of the Birmingham fans feel, you can see there's definitely first was falling, but grabbed out at Mooney. But the Birmingham fans feel this referee is not giving them too much of a good fortune here, David Pugh. Well, Birmingham can ill afford to invite pressure on themselves by giving away free kicks in this sort of situation, especially with this man Kennedy on the ball. Johnson might line one up on his right foot. Kennedy and it's too high. Well, Kennedy has got a fierce shot on him. This time trying to bend it over the wall in the top corner. Too much elevation. Poole really scampering across, realises now, nah, no way is that we're going to dip under my crossbar. Well, high drama last night, high drama again here. Here's Paisley. Hyde. Darren Baisley. Cross from Hyde. I'll tell you what, Rob, now Trevor has got more trouble. He's got more woes. I think Furlong's done his hamstring. And this is, God, it's just going from bad to worse here. But Trevor, it's Addy Bola, sorry, not Furlong. It's Addy Bola, look at him. Struggling, hobbling towards the bench. Suddenly now, another little shake of the head. Well, so much for the best laid plans of managers. Delia Adebola, who was uh, a risk, and they didn't feel that he'd complete the game anyway, but they hardly envisaged that he'd come off in these circumstances. It looks like the injury is now much, much worse. At least they do have Lee Bradbury to call on, but uh, it's actually Chris Holland that uh, they've opted to bring on. But Holland will go in and stiffen up the midfield, unlevel play alongside Furlong. Bradbury is left in reserve. Oh, that's a quiet 
light after St Andrews now, isn't it? It was an absolute cauldron first half. Suddenly, Birmingham reduced to ten men, Addy Bull off. It's very quiet. Hughes. And Love's helped it on, this is Furlong. Well, Palmer's in trouble here, no, the referee says no. Just for a moment, I thought he was reaching for a card, he's saying no, shoulder to shoulder. Goodness me, I thought Palmer was going for a walk. Here's Baisley. Right up on the outside of him. Looking for Mooney with a cross, Mooney got sandwiched by Rowett and Hughes, it's gone for the corner. And suddenly Watford are getting down the right, but what about this, Palmer on Furlong. Well, I'll tell you what, Furlong gets the ball first, and you can see there's a clear shove there. That's why the Birmingham fans are raging. Palmer already on a yellow. Furlong now back to help out defending against this Richard Johnson corner. Palmer's made a strike to the six-yard box, cleared by Michael Johnson. This is Hyde. Right. Low cross from Hyde, cleared by Hughes. This is what Watford have got to be careful as well, Rob. One against, one at the back, and Unlove's got blistering pace. The set off now is Unlove ahead of Paul Furlong. Hughes has gone through the middle. This is O'Connor with Rao to spread to to his right. Well, it's a disappointing cross from Gary Rowett after a promising break. Well, normally Gary Rowett delivers so sweetly. Not this time. Furlong was a little bit slow getting rid of the ball, I felt. Could have passed to Ella, but Rowe's got plenty of time just to pick out a blue shot. That's why when it's got in the second half, how tight is it? Watford might just bide the time, knowing as the game goes on, the extra man surely comes into play. Here's Gunga. with a permanent scowl tonight as uh, Gunga. Clearing header was by Rowett. Good hit by Johnson. Oh, just for a minute there, Poole looked a little bit anxious. Again, it was on his weaker left foot, Johnston. It's dropping out the sky. He suddenly thinks, why not? On just outside the 18-yard box, but well wide. Poole suddenly, he's a good position. He probably doesn't expect him to hit this. Bodies in front, but wide. in the middle for Birmingham, Hughes has gone to join him now and Unlove stopped anyway by Baisley. Right, this is Michael Johnson to Chris Holland. Hyde snapping in with a challenge, Holland has shown a lot of commitment since he came on. This is Hughes, now Granger. Yeah, Connor and Hyde having a little off the ball there as well. It's beginning to liven up again in that midfield. Granger couldn't get the ball in, Hyde was tackled by Connor. there's a little bit after us. so much for grand long-term plans it's the circumstances like tonight that are so difficult to cater for it looked such a good start when Adebola scored in the second minute but the controversial sending off of David Holdsworth and now Adebola's injury have completely changed the picture this is Birmingham, Birmingham's hope at the moment trying to catch Watford as he piled forward unloved one against one with his pace here's Baisley Holland trying to get back at him. Holds up his cross. Does well, Holland. Allows Granger to emerge with it. Header forward is by Gibbs. As Granger well met. Back by Palmer. Birmingham showing a great togetherness. The. Uh, Sending off seems to have bound them together quite well. They're working really hard and really diligently for each other. Well, we've got another problem here, Rob. A corner maybe getting away with it. But he look, he's one of these eyes. His arm looked a bit a little bit high there. And so on, I think it's on Mooney. You can see, well, both elbows are up there. Bang. A corner catches him, no doubt about it. Side of the face. 
And what's it now? The referee's going to call a corner over here. And it's going to be a ticking off only, I believe. Now, I don't think that was any less than what's happened to David Holdsworth. I really don't. Both players are going up with their elbows, their arms, you know, trying to get a bit of leverage here. Mooney comes off the worst. The corner doesn't get a yellow. And this, I feel sorry for Holdsworth, I really do. You can see, that's, that's worse. There's no doubt about it. That's worse than David Holdsworth. And not even a booking for Martin O'Connor. Well, a reminder of a massive weekend ahead. It's Manchester United against Newcastle in the FA Cup final. We'll first be getting a flavour of Wembley on Sky Sports 2 at 8 a.m., but uh, the programme featuring the match itself begins at midday on Sky Sports 2. And Wright looking to steal in. Cool had to be very alert there. Yeah, good header from Mooney. Got between blue sharps, out jumped them. Could have been nasty. Gibbs. Here's Rowett. Furlong. Holland. Rowett. And Kennedy, Birmingham throw. again over the target who can get the knockdowns well Watford going to scurry it clear that's Rout's throw in cleared by Page and Kennedy prevents the corner I think Trevor will be a little bit more happier now because at least Birmingham are playing in Watford's half Page and Palmer have been strong and tough back there in the heart of the defence Superman, come a bit closer. Johnson's turned back for the throw. Rowett again to take. <laughs> Supporters behind screaming, come on, give us a second one. It clear. Michael Johnson. And headed back by Darren Purse. Graham Taylor, you know, after the opening few minutes, must have been very worried now. I think he just wants a little bit more from his front players now. You know, this fella pulling goals, not been put under pressure. Here's Baisley. This is Gibbs, Kennedy on the outside of him. Bunga, right and Mooney all waiting in the middle. Now Gibbs. Mooney. Less than 18 minutes of the 90 left. One all on aggregate. And at the moment we're heading for extra time and if it was to stay this way, penalties as well. Birmingham will take that at the moment? Yeah, I do. I do. Although with Birmingham, with likes of, you know, Trevor, with, you'll know that Unlove's pace could catch them out. Adi, uh, Adi Bowl has gone off struggling, but Furlong's still there. And he could explode into action. He's looking for a strong defence now, Trevor Francis. And hopefully his forward players will get him out of jail. to be two exhibitionists in their uh, current plight. Gibbs with the throw. Kennedy. You see Birmingham now just sitting back defending. I think when the 90 minutes comes, they're still the same score. You can you know, regroup. Trevor can start trying to build them up again for this extra time which in the moment uh, they look sure to come hey 
stage. Suddenly says go and then keep our butt. <laughs> Referee could have seen that another way. Paisley done well to deliver and Mooney got the header in. Yeah, I think Watford down the right hand side, Mooney applauding the service. Wright was coming in at the far post too. But Baisley, when he gets forward, does look a good player. Check on the watch for Graham Taylor. 15 minutes. Remaining of normal time of his team with a one-man advantage. The Birmingham fans again with an anthem. Keep right on to the end of the road. And that's exactly what they need today, down to ten men. Michael Johnson. Here's Hyde. Palmer. Wright, who's been the uh, victim of one recent challenge by Granger, but skips away from him this time. Finds Gunga. A good head on the far post there from the corner. Good defending. Had to stretch. Gunga with a deep, deep cross. Well, O'Connor has been providing good backup for Rowett on that right hand side since. McCarthy was substituted. It's Richard Johnson with the throw. Rowett's towering header away. He's a, he's a big asset back there, Gary Rowett, in defensive situation. He does climb well. It's like first half when he climbed above everyone to power the header just over the crossbar. But good in defensive situations. Birmingham's defence depleted by the sending off of David Holdsworth. Good work from Holland, who's got Unglove and Furlong to his right. But there are plenty of Watford players back. He's done well to bide his time and find Hughes. Yeah, I was living off at Hughes, was I surrounded by two players. But gets himself a free kick, Johnson, right alongside Gibbs there, Colin and Brian Hughes. And now will Gary Rowett fancy a strike on goal. Gibbs with a challenge, Johnson's in there, well, referee says free kick. In a dangerous situation. Could it be a Rowett blockbuster, Granger is there to possibly test the Watford wall as well. It's Rowett! Good save! Well, Chamberlain hasn't had a lot to do this second half, has he? Had to be down smartly to his right-hand side. Well worked free kick. Rowett with the right foot through the wall. And that's a good stop. Just inside his post, Alec Chamberlain sees it late, touches it round for a corner. And the pressure at the moment unrelenting. Hughes with the corner. Cleared as far as Michael Johnson. Here's O'Connor. Baisley given away to Hughes. Unglove is in the box. That's an O'Connor. Suddenly it's Birmingham with pushing the Hornets back. And the crowd excited again. But not a lot to shout about in this second half, Birmingham City fans. Now maybe they sense one more goal could be enough, even with ten. Watford may have a one-man advantage. They appear to be panicking at the moment, though, as the corner is drifted in and cleared by Palmer. Granger knocks it back in, and it's Peter Unglove! Oh. And again, Birmingham denied by Chamberlain. Well, this, this is incredible. This is incredible. Knocked back in, Unglove from deep. Surely he must score. Gets a second chance at it. And Chamberlain, superb for Watford. This is a massive miss for me. That could be the difference of Wembley or not. But good goalkeeping and Trevor can't believe it. Another corner though, taken by Hughes. And it's Michael Johnson who's tried to turn on it. Oh, Peter Unlove, 
goodness me, what a glorious golden opportunity that was. Here's Unlove again. Hughes. Hughes has a chance on the right foot, trying to get it back on his left to create a better opportunity. A little bit of space, but not a good cross, but what a chance this is. He's got all the time in the world, he tries to take it early with the right foot on the volley, tucks it, and Chamberlain just kind of get there first. Yes, great goalkeeping. He's only got to make good contact here, into the far corner. This could be Wembley. Chamberlain spills it, but reacts with a little punch wide. Brilliant goalkeeper. Well, chances have been at a premium for Birmingham since they went down to 10 men. It was a lightweight touch from Unlove. But sharp stuff from the goalkeeper. And suddenly Gunga's through and Poole comes out to, back to sweeper and head clear. Furlong. The game is suddenly opening up with 10 minutes of the 90 still left. The 11 men of Watford against the 10 of Birmingham. Gunga. The man involved in that sending off of David Holsworth roundly jeered at every touch of the ball. And Love has got away from Palmer and it was a perfectly legal challenge. Furlong waits for the pullback, but he goes for the target and it's headed clear by Page. Here's O'Connor. Takes a second touch that's and then he's foul. Well, that's a free kick, that's a bad one but at least it gives a chance, because Palmer is down in big trouble. I think Gibbs is in trouble here too. That's going to be a yellow. O'Connor's down, but Palmer down on the touchline is in big trouble. This is late. Bang! Referee just alongside it. That surely is going to be a yellow for Gibbs. But look at Palmer. He falls really, really bad on his back. His arm is behind his back. Unloved plays on, says, no one in support. I'm going to drive for goal. Great action here at St Andrews. And O'Connor, there's a challenge, and surely... That's another booking. Right foot blaster, good stop again from Chamberlain. Well, this fella's been in the action the last three minutes. Well, Birmingham have a, another problem with uh, Martin O'Connor. Remember, they've lost David Holdsworth sent off. They've lost Dini Adibola through injury, and the signs here don't look too promising for their captain. Stretch a call for a corner. What else can go wrong for Trevor Francis down there? Well, everything that can go wrong is going wrong for Birmingham at the moment. And after such a bright start. But uh, Nigel Gibbs was the man in disciplinary trouble after the challenge that floored O'Connor. And he's become the fourth Watford player to be cautioned. Well, Unlove's been really the dangerous Birmingham player, hasn't it? With that glorious volley chance, then the blast. I think maybe now if O'Connor is off, Unlove surely must drop into midfield and Bradbury will go up front. But this is definitely late from Gibbs. It's right on the edge of the box. And bang, look at the face on O'Connor there. That looks nasty. You see clearly, well, in agony. But the Bradbury, if he comes on, Rob, he will put himself about alongside Furlong. This Birmingham is dangerous. Are down to nine men then for the moment, but they have a free kick in a very useful position. They're praying for the breakthrough here. Can Granger or Rowett deliver? It's Granger, and it's off the wall. Yeah, chance there, but straight into the wall. Just trying to feel for that far corner. You see Palmer on the line, but it was, it was going straight to the goalkeeper, I think. But what does Trevor do now? Does he gamble? As you see, Rob, he's got nine players out there. Surely Bradbury on oh no, corner's back to his feet. I think he's going to have another goal. Hughes it is who lifts in the corner. Michael Johnson comes and Chamberlain has to get a touch to it. Well, this is rousing stuff from nine men, Birmingham City at the moment. Johnson does leap well. It's a looping header. Chamberlain can't take the chance and just touches it over. Good header from Johnston. Chamberlain a little fingertip over and a corner's back on the field. And the Warrior is back as Hughes now takes this latest corner. O'Connor. Cleared by Page. This is Holland. The way Birmingham are playing, they don't look like the team short of numbers. Purse is up there. Cleared by Baisley. 
This is O'Connor. Across towards Johnson, it skims off Palmer's head. This is Purse. And Palmer... Oh, well, that's a couple, isn't it? Palmer obviously doesn't mean it. If he does, he should be playing for Brazil, because what a back pass that would be. Of course he doesn't mean it. He tries to clear it, and I don't think you can punish him for that. Good 10 minutes spell though for Birmingham, hasn't it? Watford having got over the halfway line into Birmingham's half. It's all Birmingham finishing strong. But God, what a few headaches Trevor's got. Nothing has gone right in the second half, apart from not conceding a goal. We're five minutes away from extra time. Gibbs. Gunga. Mooney, cleared by Purse, and then there was a challenge on him by Tommy Mooney. Yeah, Langston flag went up as well, and I wonder if Mooney's going to be booked. The referee saying, come here, Purse has gone down, it was a late challenge from Tommy Mooney, gets off with a ticking off. Well, it wasn't bad, I agree there. You see, Purse gets here first, Mooney can't stop himself. And that's certainly not a yellow, good decision from the ref. Right, more alarm for Birmingham is the fact that uh, Purse is now the latest casualty. Ah, oh, it's sensational the second half. And still, Watford haven't really peppered Kevin Poole's goal. That, that must be very disappointing for Graham Taylor. At the moment, he's still, you have to say, the advantage must be with Watford, the living men against ten, going into extra time and possibly penalties. worries and the anxieties are written all over their faces looking for help from any quarter well, you can't blame them can you it was all looking so rosy after the first few minutes getting the breakthrough and now suddenly it's looking like extra time and well oh, good I hope it surely not penalties I hope well Birmingham may well be battle scarred but they're still in the contest as it stands at the moment, but Watford are to try and play an ace. Alan Smart is poised to come on at the first appropriate break in play. Purse. Here's Baisley. run by Baisley and it's fallen to Richard Johnson well blocked by Purse brilliant from Purse there absolutely brilliant commitment great play well it's a double substitution from Watford Alan Smart on the right Alan Hazan the utility player just talking there to Kenny Jacket Nick Wright is coming off this is Michelle Smart with that heartbreak, Robert Wembley playing for Carlisle on the auto wing screen. Coming off early with injury. I just wonder, is he dreaming of Wembley again with Watford? There's Granger. Palmer. Michael Johnson. Granger. Hazan gets his first touch. This is Baisley. Cleared by Michael Johnson. And the offside flag is up. Well, this is some performance from Birmingham Watford. They're always going to be a tough nut to crack. And reduced to 10 men, Birmingham still pushing forward. And at this stage in the season, that's all you need. Reduced to 10 men. Extra games. Tired legs out there, it's just been a hot night too in the first half. Page. Gibbs. Now O'Connor. 
this half. This is smart. First is the player putting the pressure on, but he got his cross in only to Johnson. This is Hughes. by Granger. This is Alan Hazan. And Purse let it go! Oh, Mooney again. What a chance this is. This is a quality ball, Rob, from the Israeli Hazan. Brilliant ball. Mooney, he just chucks his left foot at it. Oh, that goes in, it's all over. What a chance, right on full time. Applauding the service, and rightly so. Quality ball. Graham Taylor's not smiling. Must have uh, thought when he saw Mooney flying in the uh, form that Mooney's been in lately that they were on their way to Wembley. But there will be five minutes of injury time before we reach extra time. Wow. Yeah, it's not an easy chance, this Rob. It's not the straight fellow strikers put their sticking up for each other, just flings himself at it. And in the end, relief Birmingham City fans see it go high and wide. Purse. Gibbs again in the build-up, cleared by Purse. Richard Johnson appeared to lean into it with his arm. This is Palmer. Hazan. So getting involved to Danger. Trying to whack one up the line. I think the referee's given away. I think it's a free kick because Page and Palmer heading for the box. But watch this for a lunge. Whoosh! That's a corner. Granger having to exercise caution. He's another Birmingham player on a yellow card. Kennedy to uh, take the free kick. Put down by Johnson and lifted over by Hazan. Well, that's another good ball in the box, wasn't it, from Kennedy? He does put a smashing ball in there. Whips it in. Look at this, flashing header, Johnson again, brave as a lion, heading out. And his arm, well, losing his balance. Hughes, Holland. And really well, Holland. Granger with a cross. Palmer gets in front of Furlong. Palmer's been the men's back there as well for Watford. Super. It's Rowett's ball in. It's uh, too deep for Furlong. Baisley finding his man. It's Alon Hazan. Here's O'Connor. Up goes Furlong, looking to help it into Underloves path. Well, this time Furlong beats, Furlong beats Palmer, but Page comes across to help his centre-half out. Page is disgusted with the decision. Good header down. Who gets there first? I don't know why, because that's got to be a corner. Well, after all the problems that Birmingham have had, David Holdsworth sent off, Adebola taken off, Martin O'Connor appears to be feeling a recurrence of his injury, but could they yet win it? in normal time. Hughes with the corner, Rao was trying to get there but the route was blocked. This is Holland. Purse. Michael Johnson's got in there! And Chamberlain turns it away! What a save! What a save! God. Has he kept Watford in this game or what, Alec Chamberlain? This is his best save of the night. Johnson steals in, great leap, downward header. Look at this for reaction. Brilliant, Alec Chamberlain. And that has kept him in it. Last gas, almost seconds ticking by. What a header. And a great right hand, strong right hand. And Trevor can't believe it again. Who'd be a manager? 
pressure has really started to tell that Alan Smart has become the latest player to be cautioned after a challenge with Martin Granger. Oh, Rob Watson, that was. Granger, well, he's in no rush to go up, is he? Birmingham fans now try rouse the team again, and how close were they to winning it there? Chamberlain, fantastic. Well, whatever happens tonight, Birmingham have uh, given their fans a performance to be proud of. Bearing in mind the difficulties that they've had to face so starkly. Martin O'Connor is really struggling on through to the end. It'll be a question as to whether he'll last extra time if it does go that far. Birmingham attempting to ensure that it doesn't. This use puts Gibbs under more pressure and forces him to concede the throw-in. Great guts from Birmingham here. They're really, you know, they're not sitting back, they're piling forward. They're going to be heartbroken later on. Rowett with the throw. Cleared by Hyde. There goes the 90 minutes. Birmingham still leading through the goal they scored in the second minute. Trevor Francis's team given that advantage by. Dili Adebola, who went off in the second half through injury. The Graham Taylor side, despite Birmingham having been reduced to 10 men through David Holdsworth's sending off, still having to hang on with some vital, vital late saves from Alec Chamberlain. It was a messy goal from Birmingham so early on. Undlove's effort coming back off the post and Palmer in trying to clear, hitting it against Adebola to bring joy to Trevor Francis. Joy that was partly erased by the incident in the second half when Holdsworth, having already been booked for one skirmish with Michelle Gunga, clashed with the Zairean again and on his assistant's advice the referee issued a second yellow and a consequent red ruling Holdsworth out of the final should Birmingham get there. Watford at the moment hanging on, the Chamberlain making sure that they do hang on, saving from Rowett and in the dying embers of that game from Johnson. Extra time to come, don't miss it. In the conclusion of the ultimate competition, the Sky Sports team presents the FA Cup Final. We brought you Manchester United, trailblazing through hostile territory. We witnessed Newcastle, single-mindedly intent on a heroic return. And when it ends at Wembley, we'll bring you Manchester United v Newcastle. The everlasting romance of the actor sponsored FA Cup Final, Saturday at 12, Sky Sports 2. He waits. That's what he does. And I tell you what. Tick followed talk, followed tick, followed talk, followed tick. Ahab says, I don't care who you are, here's to your dream. The old sailors return to the bar. Ah! Here's to you, Ahab. And the fat drummer hit the beat with all his heart. <sighs> he is still waiting. her again the other day. We like to listen to each other's breathing, she said. She's never off the phone to him. He jumps a mile every time it rings. I suppose it's healthy. She just seems so young. We had a bit of a set too the other morning. We both had a cry and a cuddle. Then the phone rang. Apparently he's moving to America. I don't know whether I'm happy or sad. Barclay card. One card, a million uses. Hello, beautiful. You dropped me toy.
Birmingham 1, Watford 0, one all on aggregate. You won't miss a kick of extra time or maybe even penalties. Let's return to your commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Well, the crowd here have been trying to raise the volume as Trevor Francis looks to inspire his weary troops onto one last stirring effort to get them to Wembley. And Graham Taylor hopes that his team can hang on because that's what they appeared to be doing as the 90 minutes wore on, despite the fact that it's Birmingham who were reduced in number after the second half sending off of David Holdsworth. Keep right on to the end of the road is the uh, Birmingham theme. It's been a pretty rocky road with plenty of obstacles to overcome here this evening but they've shown gritty resolve and Martin O'Connor there just losing out to Micah Hyde and this is Mooney with Smart having turned up in the area but a good challenge from the substitute Perts. Yeah, it had to be as well Rob inside the box but O'Connor got robbed there. Furlong had made him give him a good run. He didn't release the ball got robbed. That could have been that could have been terrible for him there. But Perts come to the rescue. Remember, if it stays 1-0 at the end of extra time, then it will be a penalty shootout to decide who goes to play Bolton at Wembley. Kennedy. Mooney. O'Connor. This is Michael Johnson. Martin O'Connor. Uh, O'Connor thinking about drilling at the far post. I think Unlove might have been better having a go at Palmer in the box. Just here, he could have got it in the box, but does a simple thing. And right on the 18-yard line, O'Connor well off target. I think this Birmingham crowd roll can really play a part here now. They've got to try and keep lifting the players down to 10 men. So important, they're shattered. They've no, they nearly stole it right in the last seconds of the game with Johnson's downward header. The nails have been bitten, they've got to get behind their side. Well, there are worries and there are tensions, but there's still hope, unless Hassan changes the course of the game and puts Watford back in the driving seat. This is Darren Baisley. Goes smart, it's gone beyond him though. Kennedy looking to drill one in. Oh, that's a cute angle, isn't it? And Kennedy has got a sweet left foot. Connor just misses this ball here and suddenly Kennedy thinks, right, I'll have a whack at that, through the legs, but it's got to be some goal from there. On his left peg, his good left peg, sort of hits his shin and well over. And again, Poole doesn't have to work for Kennedy. Well, they may have been under a lot more pressure late on in the game, but you can never write Watford off. They've beaten every other team in the top six at some stage of this season. This is Unlove. That's pure. Poor cross, and Unlove is a, you know, he is a good weapon to have when you're down to 10 men. He has got tricks, he's got tremendous strike on him, he's pacey, but you can see Brian Hughes is in there, no chance for a ball like that. Well, it can be any, you know, it's, it's been a smashing, fascinating uh, game here. Still more drama to come, but look at that, Watford, no, none on target to Birmingham's five. Here's Hazan. Paisley. Hyde. Richard Johnson. Good break for Mooney. Hughes gets it away. And Watford just seems to be growing a little bit confidence now, pushing Birmingham back. But no attempts on goal. That's disappointing. So much at stake, players given everything this evening. Beautiful evening. Gibbs. Kennedy. Here's O'Connor. Hughes. And O'Connor won that challenge draw, he's taken another mark. This is Unlove. Furlong's in the middle. A piece of magic from Unlove, tremendous run! And blocked by Page. Brilliant from Unlove, but Page has done remarkably well here. I was just saying a moment ago, good weapon to have this fella, full of tricks, but watch Page, he gets beaten there. Then it's another defender, Gibb, but look at Page getting back, brilliant. Well, 
Lavery may have to be called upon. O'Connor is still struggling. Granger with the corner for Birmingham. Holland underneath it. Clearance by Page. Kennedy. Here's Hazan. Well, there might be someone back there because a corner was one and one. We're smart. He's struggling to run a corner. Good break that's been made by Baisley. This is Alan Hazan. Baisley. Cleared by Purse only to Richard Johnson. Well, a corner and Purse both closing Johnson down. Referee signals a corner, a slight deflection from Richard Johnson. He's third shot of the night and again off target. But watch Purse, heads out, quickly goes out to rush to close. Just hits a corner for a corner kick. Across towards Page, lifted over goal kick. Yeah, that's nail bank stuff, isn't it? The ball in the far post, Michael Johnson gets underneath it, misses the ball, dink back in, and Page over the top. And the tension's crackling all around St Andrews. Both of these teams have anticipated the possibilities of uh, penalties, learning from England's failure against Argentina at the World Cup. They have been practicing their kicks, although, as uh, both camps have said, it is very difficult to recreate the match-type situation. Here's O'Connor. I think if Birmingham get to penalties, they've done fantastic, I really do. Furlong. is Johnson Hazan Darren Baisley Watford slipping back into their stride this is Hazan smarts in the middle good competitive challenge by Purse tell you what Purse, the, the Purse has come on his subs done really well here's Hyde Look back across but straight into Paul's arms yeah I was just saying this fellow's made an impact as well Hazan but Purse also come on on his sub has, has been a rock back there for Birmingham. Kennedy. Ah, this is going to be cruel on one of these teams. It really is cruel, cruel luck. There's celebration in one camp. A set of fans going home happy, delirious, looking forward to Wembley. And the other, well, they're going to be shattered. Yes. Hazan. Smart. And it's going to be another change for Birmingham, and Martin O'Connor cannot be risked any further. It's the final substitute at Trevor Francis's disposal. And O'Connor will hand over the captain's armband and will be replaced by Lee Bradbury. Well, Lee Bradbury's not a bad sub to have. O'Connor's given his all, hasn't he? Hobbling off the pitch. Trevor saying, go on, please, Lee, give me a call. And he will put himself about, but as this fella can have a well-earned rest. Bradbury still to score his first goal for Birmingham City. He made his home debut for them in the 2-1 defeat here by Watford. What a moment this would be to break that down. Who's the script being written on? Watford don't think so. Kennedy's curling ball in too far in front of Smart. I think that's a smashing ball as well. I really do, you know, he, he just... Takes one touch, whips in, that's a great ball for me. Now Graham Taylor must feel fairly anxious with the way the game has gone. His team may be one man up, but that hasn't always been evident. 
I think Graham will just be so disappointed. It must, it's been a great season for Watford, hasn't it, to get this far? But no shots on target, goodness me. Rowett. Suddenly opened up for Gary Rowett, who's looking for Furlong! I'll tell you what, Rob, there's one thing for sure. The Birmingham City fans, no matter what happens tonight, on the way home, they're going to know the name Alec Chamberlain, because he has thwarted them on so many occasions. And once again, safe pair of hands. One of only three players in the Watford lineup with experience in the top division, Alec Chamberlain. Been promoted twice in the last three seasons. Champion in this division with uh, Sunderland in '96, and then part of Watford's second division title season. This is Baisley. Hyde. Here's Richard Johnson. Hazan. Baisley unable to get it across. Darren Baisley. This is Hyde. to watch it all the way. Smart was coming in, looking for any spillage. Baisley suddenly, let's fly. Look at Smart coming in, go and drop it, say. Here's Hyde. This is Kennedy, Birmingham have four back. That was ambitious from Kennedy. Yeah, a little bit disappointed because he's smart in the box, but suddenly Watford now pushing forward. Tired looking Birmingham. Here's Holland. Granger. Danny Wright just looked at his bench there, thinking about coming up for a long run and then shaking the heads was you stay back there. How long will they leave it before they bring Kevin Poole forward for them? Chamberlain has stood between Birmingham and a second goal. Series of magnificent saves. Yeah, I remember as a kid at Ipswich, now dreaming of the Premiership. First aiming to set Bradbury away. Page gets the back pass. I guess a wee shove at the track. Michael Johnson, Page, well, and uh, this time it's Bradbury who gets clattered. Uh, Page was very unhappy with the challenge a moment ago, when it ended up in the running track. And this is a strong challenge, look at this, bang! And you can see Page, that's an aggressive challenge, but look at his elbows, they're up. You know, it's not, it's not nasty, it's just a way he sent a half jump. And you have to go back to poor David Holdsworth and feel, was he hard done by? The answer surely is yes. Page had been unhappy with his treatment at Bradbury's uh, hands a few moments earlier. Yeah, tough, tough defender. Typical of Watford. Well, past his bedtime. Yeah, I'm going to school tomorrow, Dad. But one that's uh, worth staying up for, it's been compelling so far, and this fascinating contest could still go either way. Fingernails being bitten down to the very edge. Ah, it's quite 
play it again, Sanders, and you can't you can't expect the crowd to continue. The fantastic noise of the first half, the drained, as must both managers be. So much is going on. Incredible. A whole range of emotions for both benches and for the crowd too. Birmingham given that great surge of positive adrenaline by the early goal. But it's evaporated with events since. looking more and more like penalty kicks this fellow's done well since coming on there's really good player good in possession good passer of the ball player recommended to the club by Ronnie Rosenthal who is with the uh, traveling party tonight although not currently in the first team squad and at the turnaround there's still nothing to choose between these two teams Trevor Francis's side hanging on to their lead on the night through Dili Adebola, who's since gone off injured. But Graham Taylor aware that his team really have to make their advantage tell in this final 15 minutes, otherwise it is the lottery of the penalty shootout. And it's interesting you see that, Robin. And that, I think Graham Taylor must surely say to his players now, come on, 15 minutes, let's make it count, the extra man. Let's have a go at them. At the moment, pulls had one save to make. Not enough. Let's take a few gambles, pile forward. Or does he sit, be patient, there's got to be penalties, it's penalties. One thing for sure, if it is penalties, this guy's in top form. Well, they've uh, stocked up on their water supplies in the turnaround. But it's the final 15 minutes of uh, open play in which these two teams can decide their Wembley fate. As it stands, we're still no nearer knowing who will face Bolton at Wembley. And bank holiday Monday at the end of this month. I don't think Bolton players will be too unhappy what's happening here, because this is hard on the legs. Extra time, the drama. Here's Hazan. Mooney back out to Alan Hazan. And Mooney was closing in. This is Johnson. Kennedy looking to steer it across. Oh, and Michael Johnson. That could have been an absolute calamity. Well, Johnson's having a real pop at the linesman as Graham Taylor has a smile. It does a keeper touch this. Great ball again in the near post. Johnson comes, look, it hits the side of the post. Cool diving. He says a little thank you to his right hand upright. It's Richard Johnson's corner. And again, Johnson. Well played, Michael. Well, Michael Johnson has been so good this season for Birmingham. That would have been heartbreaking stuff had that nestled in the bottom corner. Sometimes he's gone the wrong way. The run of Bradbury and Furlong, and he chose to go on his own. He said, "I can't hear you, but now you've got to get your head up there." Furlong, Undla, Granger. He's looking for Lee Bradbury this time. Tremendous again from Page. But they defended well then two centre halves. Good follow up there from Granger. Palmer gets it away. Hyde. Here's Hazan. And here's Mooney closing in, and Rowett makes the header. That's right, highlight. Rowett's taking the knock. That's right, highlight. 
this guy's presence in the side, especially in dangerous aerial situations. He does leap well, he does head the ball in both ends of the pitch. This is excellent, this is brave defending. And again, it's Mooney who's coming in, trying to get on the far post. Great header, bang, clash of heads. Let's hope they're both OK. This corner could provide the breakthrough for his team. He toiled hard against 10-man Birmingham without reward. Furlong meets the corner. This is Anne. This is Micah Hyde. Furlong dives in with a challenge. I'll tell you what, Rob. I'll tell you what, Rob. He's got to be absolute foot perfect here. Okay, Taylor shakes his head. Does he get the ball? Oh, and the referee was close by, deciding no penalty kick. Micah High in the box. And I tell you what, there's a trip there. The referee says no. Granger looks at the ref. That was a trip. Well, it uh, could have been decided on uh, a penalty without the game going the full duration. Here's Lee Bradbury, and he's won the free kick. Is this a chance for Trevor Francis's team? They haven't been deflated as they might have been by events. Can they provide a rousing finish here with this huge free kick? to Purse. Holland, Birmingham leaving plenty forward. And Palmer getting in a tangle. And the shot in the end from Bradbury appeals for handball. Nothing given. No handball. Not for me, not from this angle. No handball. Bradbury and, and all this Andrews crowd shout here. I don't think this is handball. Borderline decision is being uh, appealed for vehemently. John Johnson had his both arms to his side. Gibbs. And it's Hassan coming in, and he couldn't keep the header down. Well, Hughes couldn't get back to him. Granger was sucked in. Hassan, that is a great chance. Beautiful ball. Look at this. Free header. And heads it over. But the Watford, the Watford fans are in good voice too. Nail bite stuff. Well, Watford have been the surprise package of the first division all season. Limited money to spend. Graham Taylor's uh, investments in the form of uh, Alan Smart and Nick Wright, a couple of players from Carlisle, brought in for a total of less than a quarter of a million. I think, I think it's been a fantastic season for them, Rob. And they haven't actually performed too well in front of the Sky cameras. This has been better tonight. Well, a lot of people mistook Taylor's caution earlier in the season for a lack of ambition, but he's desperately ambitious to uh, get Watford into the top flight. And they may realise it ahead of schedule. So, you know, we need a goal. I can't go through penalties again. Wembley last year, playoff final, oh, not again. Here's Page. because Baisley, for me, has been one of the better Watford players tonight. Hazam again, good placing. Go on then, stick it in, look for the head of Mooney. And over behind in his own supporters. And the 
with every wasted cross. As the managers are only too well aware, we head closer and closer to the scenario of a penalty shootout. Nice to end of his pals, Luther Blissett behind them. Kenny Jacker there, praying for a goal. No one wants to see penalties. Jack and Blissett part of the uh, team that stormed into the old first division in the 80s. It's 11 years since Watford were relegated and it took the return of the messianic figure of Graham Taylor to restore the former glories. Can they take that extra step this year? Winning out the challenge with Richard Johnson. This is Hyde. Get up, Frank! This is Kennedy. Cleared by Michael Johnson. This is Micah Hyde. And Granger gets there ahead of Alan Hassan. Oh. Well, that's commitment for you, isn't it? What Burnley have got to be careful here, Rob. Watford have got two players at the far post on this right hand side every time they attack down the left. This is Gibbs. It's deflected behind for a corner. Oh, this is nail biting stuff now for Birmingham City fans again. Gibbs must be tired, played well, suddenly thinks, right, come on, right foot. And that's Gary Rowett. Well, the tension is biting, but it's been relieved for the moment for the Watford fans by the sight in front of them of Richard Johnson taking this corner. That's clear by Paul. Moody helping it back in there. Palmer looking to emerge with it. Rowett's gone down in a heat and he's hot, Rowett, and Granger. Uh, it's just beginning to boil over a little bit. It's because of the challenge on Gary Rowett, that's what's angered so many players there. It's Paige and Michael Johnson trying to get each other. Well, it's been a difficult enough night anyway for referee Dave Pugh, so how does he read this one? Yeah, Michael Johnson just getting a little bit overheated, someone's just got to calm him down. It's, it's just here, that's what happened. Palmer catching Rowett, I don't think he meant it to be honest, but that's what infuriated the players. Then Palmer catches Purse, Granger goes flying in. Oh. Well, he's called the two captains over for a talking to, Michael Johnson having inherited the armband from Martin O'Connor and uh, Robert Page for Watford. It's uh, peace talks. Friendly handshake? No, I don't think so. Well, five minutes from here, and what's going to happen? It's Who's been... going to summit as a hero out there? A thoroughly absorbing contest. It's uh, a shame that at the end of it, there will have to be one loser. What could have? Defended resiliently, and Birmingham has shown great resolve despite being down to ten men. Rowett with the throw. Convincing header from Baisley that had Palmer under pressure. And once again, Palmer was there, ready for any mistakes. Now Granger with the throw. And it's Martin Granger with a second bite at the cherry. Up comes Furlong. Well, Furlong and Page. Furlong claiming Page is grabbing his shirt. It's a good deep cross from Granger right to the far post. You see Furlong towering above Page, I didn't see the top. significant part to play in proceedings. Furlong. Rowett. 
towards Bradbury. Cleared by Gibbs. You mentioned Bradbury there, Rob. I just wonder if he'll take a penalty. He goes to penalties. Hasn't scored for Birmingham yet. Imagine that for pressure. Well, his confidence has uh, suffered in front of goal. Only his third club of the season. He managed uh, nine at his previous two, Manchester City and Crystal Palace. A final rallying call from the Birmingham fans, looking for it to be settled in extra time. Rangers kick, though, a disappointment. I'll tell you what as well, Rob, I wouldn't want to be picking man of the match. Here's Kennedy. As Alan Smart in the box, so too is Johnson, and Paul gets some sort of contact on it. This is Hazan. Now Hyde, in comes Rowett. I tell you what, Kennedy must be saying to himself, how has no one got on the end of any of my crosses? Because Peter Kennedy, brilliant crosser of the ball. Holland, Bradbury. I tell you what, it was on as well, Unlove was through there. As the full-back was playing him on Baisley. Well, Bradbury's caught Hazam. And that just gives the players a little breather. Watch this. In comes Bradbury. Bang, have a bit of that. Well, at this late stage of the game, it's just a talking to for Lee Bradbury. But we're into the final minute of extra time. What a way to go, away, I can't believe it. Paisley's kick. Ball completely uh, caught out of position, but he was fouled anyway. Ah, clear foul. A smart look, smart's backing into him. Clear free kick. of penalties, Hazan's cross, sure handling from Paul, but the man of the match and a very sure-footed performance from him, the Watford captain, Robert Page, nationwide man of the match. Goes Page again, climbing with Bradbury, there's Kennedy. Smart. Holland. been heroic performances all over the park, not least from this man, Chamberlain. One way or another, there'll be perhaps a big goalkeeping hero tonight. This is Unglove. Again, no route through. Well, Bradbury sent him, hey? Well, it is penalties. And Trevor Francis and Graham Taylor have got more agonies to endure, but it's a great credit to Birmingham's resilience that they've got this far. Reduced to ten men in the second half by the sending off of David Holdsworth. It looked for all the world as though the early advantage they'd established with Dele Adebola's second-minute goal might be wiped out by Graham Taylor's team. But in the end, they had to do a lot more of the defending as the Francis troops marched on and produced a series of good saves from Alec Chamberlain. It's interesting there, Trevor, having a pop at his physio, so get on there, get on the road, get the legs going again. Right, well, we will be back for the penalty shootouts again. Don't miss it. Well, Nigel Spackman and Dean Holsworth are still with us. Of course they're still with us. How could you leave this? And uh, 
could you give Birmingham the advantage going into these penalties, bearing in mind that they've been at a disadvantage for so long? Well, I don't think anybody's got the advantage. It's just down to a lottery now of a penalty shootout. You know, everybody's expected to score. The goalkeeper's expected not to save any. If they do, they can become the hero. But for Watford, the, the hero for them really has been Alec Chamberlain. He's made some wonderful saves. The commitment and the fitness of Birmingham has been tremendous. You would have thought, really, a lot of the time that they were the, the team with the extra man. And, and Watford haven't really called on Kevin Paul to make any saves, just one weak shot really. But other than that, it's really been Birmingham have been the side on top. And when it comes down to this, it's just about bottle and a little bit of luck. Dean, both managers with plenty to say. Presumably they know their penalty takers. Yeah. But will they have practice penalties? They would have done, I'm sure they both be uh, very professional and they'd have said have a you know have a practice in the uh, in a week just gone. So uh but it's who's up for it now. Uh, I'll tell you one thing though, um the crowd is gonna be very important now. And I'll be very interested to see what end the kick is, because if they're going to the Birmingham fans, it could just give uh, Watford's nerves a little bit, one more rattle. The Birmingham fans have been absolutely fantastic tonight. Yeah. It's all about nerves, isn't it? It's all about holding your nerve. What can Trevor Francis and his opposite number, Graham Taylor, say to instill a bit of confidence? Well, I think he's just got to say to them, look, you've done fantastic, you've got this far, just go out there. If you're up for a take and a penalty, take one. If you're not, then step back. And I think it's down to the experienced ones. Those who have played well on the night will want to take penalties. Those who haven't had quite such a good game will think, well, I'll let somebody else take it. But if it goes past the five, then obviously it comes down to sudden death, as we saw at Wembley last uh, season for Charlton and Sunderland, how harrowing it can be if you miss that penalty. And uh, tonight it's going to be no different. This is getting to Wembley and a chance still to get into the Premiership. What's the secret, Dean? You've taken a few. Do you just blast them or do you place them or what? Obviously, everyone's different. Um, it's really about going up, picking your spot and don't change your mind. Your first decision is the best and uh, hopefully the goalkeeper go the wrong way. Um, you know, that's my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you think, for that. Um, Chamberlain's been outstanding and he's going to be very confident now. He played well, very, uh, very well all night long and uh, say Paul's not had much to do, so he's going to be the colder of the two. The thing is also, Matt, is that there's some very, very tired legs out there. The goalkeepers will be tuned in for this, but some of the players who are taking the penalties, you know, be very tired. They need those legs rubbed and, it, and Kennedy's going to take the first one. OK, it's about to commence the drama of the penalty shootout. Let's rejoin our commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Well, Watford starting strongly with Peter Kennedy, who has scored a couple of penalties for them in matches already this season. Two of his seven goals from the spot. And it's in just. Oh, how close does Kevin Poole? He gets a hand on this, in off the post. It's the pace and power of Kennedy's shot. Watch this, this is almost a brilliant save. Gets a hand to it, touches it on the post, and agonisingly off the inside and into the net. Advantage Watford, the kicks are taking place at the end where the Birmingham fans are massed. That's purely the referee's decision, there's no choice for the players in that matter. Paul Furlong, three of his 13 goals this season have come from the penalty spot. And after Kennedy has given Watford the perfect start, and Furlong keep Trevor Francis's team in the hunt here. He saved it! Oh, the look says it all, doesn't it? It's a slow, casual run-up. Just tries to side-foot it. And Chamberlain, brilliant. He's been brilliant all night, guesses the right way. And unlike Poole, his arm, his hand is strong enough. Great save. Well, now Watford have to stay solid. Their goalkeeper, who's been a hero all night, has given them a breakthrough. And Kevin Poole, who almost got to Peter Kennedy's first kick, now faces Steve Palmer. Oh, it's White! Well, Palmer's played like a hero. He just goes for power here. Steve Palmer goes to blast the back of the ball. And unbelievably, St Andrews erupts, drags it wide, a pulls right-hand post. Oh, heartbreaking for Steve Palmer. So Birmingham, having seen Furlong's penalty stopped, can get themselves back on a level footing here. Martin Granger, one of his four goals this season was a penalty. And he gets this one in. Who's a rocks again? Brilliant penalty. 
just side foots it, keeps his head down, catches the inside of the, the side then. Great penalty. Well, the cheers ring out now for Richard Johnson. Well, I feel for the moment I wouldn't want to be doing this. A moment for the Watford midfielder to keep his cool. And it's in off the underside of the bar. Well, cool customer. Just had a little look, right foot, bang. Great penalty. Cool going the wrong way. The ball's rising all the time. Catches the underside of the bar. Oh, smashing pen. 2-1 to Watford on kicks. Gary Rowett here. Against Alec Chamberlain. Chamberlain having made one save in the shootout already. No stopping that one. A little punch of the air from Gary Rowett. He's been so passionate all night. Right foot, again, head down, blast. Past Chamberlain, no chance. And the pressure, the pressure, it builds. It's even. One miss each. Two each. Darren Baisley to try and put Watford's noses in front. Scores. So what? A little smile right in front of the boat with the Birmingham fans. Again, power, blast, top corner, goalkeeper, no chance. Concentration, power, accuracy. Watford back in front. And now we'll see if Lee Bradbury's confidence has suffered through his lack of goals for Birmingham since his arrival on loan to the end of the season from Crystal Palace. It's a big, big moment, this, for Lee Bradbury. And he scores. I tell you what, he deserves credit at this point. It must have been going through his mind. Sends the keeper the wrong way. Right foot, drives it, keeps it low, side foots it. Chamberlain, no chance. Oh, there's a the relief. Well done, Lee Bradbury. And they're almost at sudden death, and... Tommy Mooney cannot afford a slip here. Might be a little bit of gamesmanship here. Kevin Poole just making sure it's in exactly the right position. Has Mooney's concentration been disturbed by that? Tension etched on his face. But he scores. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That was a pressure kick, no doubt. Drives it right in the middle. If Poole stays there, he's got a chance. Great pen. And now... Graham Taylor knows Brian Hughes. What about the pressure on this young man stepping up now? Well, if that last kick was a pressure kick, who would be 22-year-old Brian Hughes? If he misses this, Birmingham's dream of Wembley and promotion is over for this season, and it'll be Watford going to play Bolton in the final. It's a massive responsibility for the youngster. And Trevor Francis knows it, but has entrusted Hughes with this vital, vital kick. Oh, and he keeps his call cool magnificently. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is, I tell you what, this is pressure. Chamberlain goes the right way, but what? Look at the concentration. Power, pace, accuracy, side foot. Oh, relief for Trevor. Well, we're into the phase of sudden death now and a miss can be so, so costly. Let's hope our studio guests are not the kiss of the day with the man of the match here. He doesn't deserve it. It's Robert Page. And it's in. I tell you what, I think this has just took a little bit of paint off the underside of the bar as well. Oh, just for a minute it was rising. That probably just clips the underside of the bar, right-footed. Oh! I bet his heart was in his mouth. And in sudden death, you don't really want to be going second, and that's how Darren Purse has to go now, following Robert Page's successful spot kick. It's this 22-year-old sign from Oxford. Again, he hasn't scored a, a goal in Birmingham colours. A substitute during the game. And a massive burden weighing on his shoulders now. Oh, 
Oh, but this is getting unbearable. Unbearable. Darren Press, little shimmy. Right foot, Chamberlain the wrong way. St Andrews erupts again. Oh. Forward comes Alan Smart to take the next kick. He endured the agonies of being substituted at Wembley through injury for Carlisle in the auto windscreen shield final. He could take Watford a step closer if he scores, and he does. Yeah, seeing the crowd, I can't hear you now. And that certainly silenced the big Birmingham following. Tucks it the right way. If Poole goes that way, I'm sure he gets there. He doesn't. Well, there could be a bit of a debate going on now as to who is uh, next in line. It looks, in fact, as though Kevin Poole himself is stepping up to take the kick uh, for this Birmingham. Is, this is hard for a goalkeeper. Well, goalkeeper against goalkeeper. Birmingham, of course, with David Holdsworth sent off in the game and limited in numbers anyway. Can Poole keep Birmingham in the hunt? Yes, he can! What a strike this is! Oh, oh, what a strike! Head down, whack! Get in! Punches the air! Chamberlain, no chance! Power beats him! Well, both these sides are really reaping the reward for all the practice that they've done in the kicks on the training ground. Just one miss from each side at the moment. Trevor Francis playing, or praying now that uh, Paul, in getting back to the day job, can prevent Hazan from scoring, having just scored himself. It's Alon Hazan. And he scores. Say what? How many presses he come on? Huh? What a good penalty this is. Keep full of pressure. Just tucks it away. Easy. A Sunday morning pub game. Get in there. Well, the pressure just grows and grows. And now it's young Chris Holland who's stepping forward to take the kick. A player who played three times in the Premiership, signed by. Kevin Keegan once for Newcastle, former England under-21 international. Oh, no, it's saved! The disappointment falls on Holland, and it's Watford who are going to Wembley to play Bolton in the first division playoff final. You feel for Chris Holland, you really do, the youngster. I can't believe it. It's not a good penalty, is it? The pressure's got to him, that's the problem. The pressure's got to him. But Chamberlain's been fantastic all throughout the night. He guesses the right way, and he gets his body behind it. It's heartbreaking for Birmingham, for Trevor and all the fans here, and for Chrissy Holland. Heartbreaking. It's a dreadful way to lose a match in such an important match. Incredible. Watford, though, you have to say, Fantastic, what a season it's been and tonight. Well, the celebrations won't be crazy because this playoff final, Wembley, on the Monday, soon comes around quick. But one team had to, well, not blow, one team had to go home disappointed. And Watford, well, I thought with the underdogs tonight, I really did. Fantastic. And the fans, they're going to celebrate all the way down the M6, the M1, back to Hertfordshire. Well, 15 years after Graham Taylor led Watford out at Wembley for the FA Cup final, he'll be going back there beneath the Twin Towers with his team 90 minutes away from a place in the Premiership. It is a massive achievement for a club only promoted from the second division last season. They needed all their steel and resolve, but in the end, the man who was the hero during the game, Alec Chamberlain, in making a series of fine saves, made the crucial penalty save too from young Chris Holland as Birmingham's dreams finally found it. They had to show all the resolve and steel that they had after David Holdsworth was dismissed. But in the end, it's Watford's night. A number of cleanly taken penalties. Seven successful kicks taken in the end. Steve Palmer, the only one to miss. But all that work on the training ground paying off in handsome fashion. Oh, what a way to lose it, Rob, eh? I was just praying someone was going to get a goal in extra time. Really, 
It is hard, but what a fairy tale for Watford again. Graham Taylor, he must be so delighted, so proud of his players. And look at this. I know there's a game coming up just over a week's time, but surely they deserve a celebration tonight. Well, it may not have been the way that they wanted to qualify for the Wembley final. But after the perseverance and patience that they had to show to try and break down this difficult Birmingham rear guard, they're delighted that their efforts now have reaped the reward. Uh, Birmingham fans, uh, this is a guy I'm afraid he costs you. He's been fantastic tonight. But the Birmingham fans, given both sets of players, a great reception. The Watford, the Watford, the Watford players. As Chrissy Holland walks off head down, what for players going over to the sad Birmingham fans and applauding them because the Birmingham fans have been sensational. They've been brilliant tonight. Well, I'm sure every footballer wants to be remembered in his uh, career, but when you come to penalties in a penalty shootout, you'd rather be forgotten because you never remember the men who've had the successful kicks in a shootout. You think back to. Uh, famous penalty shootouts of our time and there's the haunting spectre of the faces of Pearce and Waddle and Southgate and Batty and last year at Wembley, Michael Gray. So this year it's uh, Chris Holland who joins that list but Birmingham must hope that they'll show the same determination that Sunderland showed in bouncing back. Meanwhile, Watford grateful for their chance, their big day out at Wembley and having beaten Bolton twice this year in the league, I'm sure they'll go into it with a fair measure of confidence. Devastation for Martin Granger and the loyal supporters who've uh, done their best to cheer the team through right on to the end of the road. In the end, though, it wasn't to be. Watford are through to the Wembley playoff final against Bolton. They've beaten.